Nothing like playing at home. The University of Washington Huskies back in Husky Stadium after a season opening victory over Arizona State down in Tempe last Saturday night. The boats are in. You can tell it's time for football here at Husky Stadium as better than 72,000. In fact, a sellout here to watch the Wisconsin Badgers out of the Big Ten come out to Seattle to take on the defending national champs. Hello again, everybody. Don Poyer, along with my pal Chuck Nelson. Good to have you with us. And, oh, it's so nice to be home. This is this crowd's <laughs> first chance to welcome back the defending national champions. That's right, officially. Now, let's talk about Wisconsin a little bit. They've got a youngster by the name of Terrell Fletcher, a very good little running back. For the first time since 1941, a Wisconsin true freshman has led the team in rushing. 446 yards last year. He's not a big guy, 5'9", 185, but he can make some plays. You see, he gets the ball in the end zone here. As far as receivers, a couple good ones in Lee DeRamus and Aaron Brown. Again, a true freshman who was the leading player in, at his position. Lee DeRamus was the number one receiver, 374 yards last year. Aaron Brown, more of a, of a possession-type receiver. DeRamus is a big-time receiver's body, 6'2", 185 pounds. He averaged 32 yards a catch his senior year in high school, so you know he can make big plays. Aaron Brown, again, the number one possession-type receiver for this team, 27 receptions last year. That was the club, uh, club lead. And defensively, they've got a young man who is only a sophomore. He was an All-American freshman last year, freshman team. And Mike Thompson at the left defensive tackle he'll be playing today. A very good player. Here you see kind of the young, the young and the old of the Wisconsin defense. Remember, Barry Alvarez is a defensive coach by nature. Mike Thompson, again, a freshman All-American last year. This is Gary Casper. He's a senior. He's been almost a starter since day one at Wisconsin. With a big year this year, he could be the all-time leading tackler in that program. Wisconsin with major improvement last year going 5-6 and six after 1-10 and 10 in 1990. For Washington now, major improvement for the wide receivers as we start the 92 season. Well, we lost our top three receivers. The Huskies lost their top three wide receivers from last year. These are the two guys that have become the starters this year, Joe Krolik and Damon Mack. Five receptions between these two last year, the entire year. Last week they had 11, including this one by Damon Mack. You can see the athletic ability that he possesses just going right up and over the Arizona State defender. Joe Krolik is more of the possession type receiver. Here you see him work that sideline. Watch him, keeps that left foot in bounds, keeps that right foot up and gets the reception. Now, we know what these two can do, and we saw what Napoleon can do, but we thought we'd show you one little play that Lincoln Kennedy provided for Napoleon, springing him for one of his long runs against ASU. It was the 63-yard touchdown play <laughs> last week. Watch what? number 75 get downfield, first of all, Ooh. and just plant this guy. That guy will be blooming sometime next spring. <laughs> all right. Now, defensively, Mike Lustig finally getting a start after waiting three years here behind Steve Entman. One of the most prized recruits that they've ever had locally from the University of Washington came in and had the misfortune of playing behind possibly the best player ever in this program. Here you see some of the areas that they need to improve on. Here you see the fact that both DeMarco Farr and Mike Lustig are both capable of making big-time plays. All righty, let's take a look now at the keys to the game as we get into this one. First, take a look at Wisconsin. First of all, they have to run the ball. Again, if there's one weakness on this Husky defense, it is perhaps the defensive line. That's an area they need to improve. That's an area that Wisconsin needs to try to exploit. Uh, circle the wagons, Wisconsin playing on the road. Home opener for the number two ranked team in the country, defending national champions. They've got to try to stay in this game as long as they possibly can and keep the crowd and the emotion out of it. For the Huskies, their defense last week gave up an 80-yard run, a 30-yard run, a 29-yard run, and a 24-yard run. And with team speed like they've got, they should not be able to not be giving up those type of plays. They've got to make a team, you know, get 10, 12, 14 play drives in order to score against them. I don't think many offenses can do that. Offensively for the Huskies, they just have to be consistent. Those linemen have got to put their helmet on the right guy. Billy Joe Hobart has got to make good decisions. Everybody's got to run good routes. They don't need to do anything spectacular. They just need to take care of business. Enough is enough. Let's play football. It's time to watch Wisconsin against the Washington Huskies. Washington winning six straight season openers at home to win seven. They'll do it without this man, Bean O'Brien. The tailback not even suiting up today. Kickoff coming up. I'm with Chuck Nelson. Just had a moment of silence for Travis Spring, the young man who passed away last spring, the Husky football team member due to complications related to cancer and heart failure. Wisconsin is now here in town, and they're ready to begin their season after coming off a five and six season last year. As you see, not a whole lot of luck against Pac-10 teams. And road openers can't get even more, any more even than that as Barry Alvarez begins his third year at Wisconsin. He was an assistant at Notre Dame, also at Iowa. And in fact, many of you know here in the Seattle area, 
Barry was an assistant for Hayden Fry, the year that Washington defeated Iowa 28 to nothing in the Rose Bowl in the early 80s. Washington, on the other hand, nothing but Rose's 12-game uh, winning streak against the Big Ten. The last loss coming when my teammate was playing for this man, Chuck Nelson. He kicked two field goals, but the Huskies lost to the Wolverines 23 to 6. Don James, he's won 12 straight against Big Ten teams. He is in his 18th year. And the series overall belongs to Washington. We talked about the Rose Bowl back in 1960 after the 59 season. And then two other times. So Washington has won at a neutral site at home and away. Ready to kick. Travis Hansen, number four, the junior out of Spokane and Mead High School, who was four for four in his PATs last week against ASU. Lee DeRamus, no, it'll be an up man, number 13, Lionel Crawford, who gets it up to the 19-yard line. Lionel, a backup, and a senior. So Jay Macias will start things at quarterback now. He is only a sophomore out of Montebello, California. Jay getting his first start as they begin the season. Played quite a bit last year. Here's the backfield. Terrell Fletcher, you're going to like him. Mark Montgomery, Lee DeRamus, Aaron Brown outside, and the tight end is Michael Rowan. He's a good one. Young up front, Chuck Bellin, a senior, though. He was all Big Ten. So first and ten on the 19-yard line. And a flag right off the bat as they give to Jason Burns, who started in the backfield. They said it would be either Fletcher or Burns with a likelihood Terrell Fletcher would be back there for the Big Ten Wisconsin Badgers. So a few butterflies, Chuck Nelson, for Barry Alvarez's team as they get started. First snap of the 1992 season for that Wisconsin Badger offense. That's not what they had in mind. The Husky defense must be awful good at that. Remember all the procedure penalties that Arizona State had last week during one series? It took them five times, five tries to run a single play. First time this young man played quarterback for Wisconsin was at Ohio State in front of 94,000 people. He's got some 72 to 75,000 today. So it'll be second down after the fire. Check that first down again after the penalty. First and 15, and it is Jason Burns Jason getting the call Burns. as Mike Lustig is in there, number 74, for the tackle. Defensively for the Huskies, a lot of familiar names coming back, but up front, mostly new, and Jamal Fontaine Marco Farr, who got a lot of minutes last year, and Mike Lustig, we've talked about him. Andy Mason, who will move up in a three-point quite often, and Dave Hoffman and Clifford in the middle, along with Jaime Fields on the weak side. Bailey, Josh Moore, Tommy Smith, and Shane Palcoa. Second down and 13. Ball on the 16-yard line. And they keep it on the ground to Jason Burns yet again. That conservative Big Ten football, uh, Mr. Nelson, or what? So far, as we talked about, the one perceived weakness of this Husky defense is in the middle. Gave up 275 yards rushing last week. Wisconsin hoping to take advantage of that and show the Huskies right away that they're going to be able to do the same thing. Dave Hoffman, the senior on this team by far, the emotional leader as well. Remember bumping into him in the Sonic locker room during basketball season last year. He's a basketball fan just as much as he is football. Third down and 12 from the 17. As a man goes in motion, here comes the heat. And Macias tries to go to Burns, and it hits him right in his back because of the heat by Fontaine and company. Huskies like to play that pressure defense. That time, Jamal Fontaine, Tommy Smith. <laughs> So, it somewhat doesn't matter. Of a, somewhat of a break. <laughs> break for Wisconsin. However, in it'll be. In terms of another chance, however, as you say, Don, it's going to bring up a third and even longer. Well, they, re they return the opening kickoff to the 18-yard line. They've had three or four tries, and it's third and 17 back on the 12. So this first drive not going well. Two wide receivers to the left side. Macias wanting to throw. Got a man going for Doremus, but Josh Moore there defensively, and Doremus just couldn't hold on. Josh Moore, the sophomore, taking over for the graduating Dana Hall, who is starring for the 49ers, and the crowd congratulating its defense. 
Back to punt is Sam Bite, number 26, a sophomore out of Racine, Wisconsin. Averaged almost 36 yards per last year. All these numbers from last season, of course, since this is the opener for the Badgers. They ended the 91 season with two straight victories as the ever dangerous Napoleon Kaufman waiting. Low punt could be returned. Here he comes. Midfield got an opening to the 35 to the 30 fumble. Picking it up for the Washington Huskies. I believe it was backup fullback Richard Thomas. Getting it down to the 14. They say that exciting things happen when Napoleon <laughs> Cuff is on the field. The first part of this punt return is certainly exciting on his own in a positive way. Look at the nice block by Scott Greenlaw, number 12, and then the rest is Napoleon Kaufman. High steps a man there. One man to beat the punter. Boom. Bob pops out when he takes the hit. That number. That's Tom, Tom, uh, Richard Thomas, yes. There's a backup fullback. Richard Thomas to pick up. Remember in college football, you can advance fumbles again. On first down, Jay Berry. Good penetration by Wisconsin as Lamarck Shackerford, number 62, gets in the backfield in a hurry. Billy Joe, of course, the undefeated starting quarterback for the Huskies, now at 13-0. Last week, good day. No picks. That's what you like to see. And Berry gets the start again. Remember, Ben O'Brien did not suit up. And the people up front, along with Kennedy, Andrew Peterson, Caligas, Gallagher, and company. Here we go. Second down and 14, loss of four. Billy Joe with three receivers to the right, looks to the right, crawling, touchdown, Washington. Got away from number 10, Reggie Holt, the strong safety. And that will be touchdown number one of 1992 as the Puyallup connection, Holbert to Kralik comes through. Eric Bjornsson will hold. Kralik was seven receptions last week against ASU for 81 yards, but no six pointer. And first pass of the day, there it is. Hansen with the kick, and it is good. So, very quickly, very quickly, the Huskies score on their second play of the day after the punt return by Napoleon Kaufman. 12-20 remaining here in the first quarter. We'll be back in just a moment. 7-0 Washington on their opening drive of the day. Sun Devils last week averaged only 1 minute and 50 seconds. This is going to make that average even shorter, Chuck, or lower. Second play of the drive. See Joe Kralik, fair open last week, Don. The Puyallup is being done all over. <laughs> They're doing the See, Puyallup. Good protection, looks off the, re the defenders. And Joe Kralik being defended by a linebacker, Nick Rafko. Kind of a mismatch, mismatch there. And yeah, Reggie see, Holt didn't see him either, number 10. 34 seconds. Yeah, that'll bring that average down from a minute 50. It just shows you what good field position being set up by those punt returns that Napoleon Kaufman can do. Also, averaged 22 yards a return last week. That one even longer. Lee DeRamus is a good one. He had a 50-yard kickoff return against Minnesota last year, and he is back number two waiting for the kick. This one won't get to it. And it goes out of bounds. So the flag will fly. Oh, went out of the one and three quarter yard line. Tried to it's tried to sneak his way back <laughs> inside the inside the boundary. Travis Hansen did a great job last week of kicking off from that left hash into that left corner. Opening kickoff today from the right hash popped it up a little bit. They moved him back over to the left and he overcompensated. Hansen was trying to contain Mario Bates last week. This time it's Lee DeRamus who is maybe just as potent as Bates. However, Doremus a wide receiver rather than a ball carrier from the regular line of scrimmage for the offensive unit. Wisconsin decides to take the ball on their own 35 rather than have Washington pick it again. So it's first and 10, 12, 20, remaining in the first quarter. Huskies up by seven. Doremus going in motion. Here's the quick pitch. Again, Burns getting around the corner. Could go all the way. Where's the speed? My goodness, he's got it. And Jaime Fields brings him down at the 16-yard line. 
Jason Burns, much like Napoleon Kaufman last week, blitzes the Huskies around the corner. 48-yard run for Jason Burns. One of our game keys was that that Husky defense has got to not give up the big play. You see Andy Mason, number 13, gets hooked inside, and the run support from Tommy Smith and James Clifford is not there. Josh Moore just runs right past Jason Burns, and it's Jaime Fields all the way from the other side of the field to make the play. This time, Brett Moss, number 33, and nothing doing up the middle. He is a backup to Mark Montgomery. A play like this, defensively, you have to have somebody that is turning the play back inside. You see Andy Mason, 13, gets turned inside. Josh Moore cannot get off the block, and Tommy Smith, the rover or strong safety, cannot fill, and it's off to the races. Fortunately, that Husky defensive team speed comes in handy, and Jaime Fields is able to make a play. Second down and nine as Crawford goes in motion. Looking for an opening, and Burns has no place to go as Mike Lustig is the first to get in there, the nose tackle. Senior out of Bellevue, and they lose two yards, so it'll be third and 11 from the 18-yard line. That's the way it's supposed to work. You have somebody turning the play back inside where all your help is. You get those inside people like Mike Lustig able to fill the gaps, fill the lanes, and make a play. We haven't even seen Terrell Fletcher yet as a running back. It's been all Jason Burns, number 44. Third down and 11. They need to get down to about the seven. Man open! Touchdown, Wisconsin! Tim Ware, number 15, a senior backup wide receiver. They're doing it with backups, Chuck. Walter Bailey, the veteran corner, getting beat. Barry Alvarez with nothing to lose. He's going to play everybody he can. Walter Bailey, one of the better one-on-one -on -one coverage players in the country. It's burned for six here. Rich Thompson back to kick the extra point attempt. And it is good. And we're tied here in Seattle with ten and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Wisconsin coming out here thinking, hey, we saw some vulnerability in this Washington defense against Arizona State. And let's see what we can throw against them. And look what they have done. After the 48-yard run, Wisconsin finds themselves in a third and 11 situation. Good protection. Walter Bailey just flat out gets beat by Tim Ware. Post corner route. Bailey bites on the inside play. Here you see that good protection. Chuck Bellin doing his job on Mike Lustick, and Tim Ware doing his job on Walter Bailey. Ware, a senior out of St. Petersburg, Florida, has got to feel awfully good in contrast to Don James, who is saying, I would imagine this team has got to wake up. We talked about the Huskies and their ability to score quickly. Four plays, less than two minutes for Wisconsin after opening up their offensive 1992 season with a <laughs> illegal procedure penalty once they they found their footing very quickly. Well, and you tend to wonder sometimes with Washington coming out scoring as quickly as they did, they had the moment of silence for Travis Spring. Some of the players acknowledged that might, well, I can't say knock off the edge going into a ball game, but that sometimes can have an effect. Plus, the Huskies just ran into some great execution by Wisconsin. The Huskies, like, remember that gambling style of defense relies on two things, pressure from the up-front people and good coverage by those defensive backs. And you can only cover a guy for so long if you're not getting that pressure from the up-front people. That's right. That's a you, very good point, Chuck. You cannot, you cannot chase any Big Ten Division 1A receiver for five or six seconds. Thompson's kick to Napoleon Kaufman. In the end zone, here he comes to the 10, to the 15, and he's smothered at the 15. Let's see if they'll give him the forward progress. And this Badger team is fired up as well they should be. They're playing in their season opener against the number two team in the country and a national defending champion. All we heard in the Seattle area from Barry Alvarez all week was, boy, we don't want to play this game. Whoever scheduled this game is going to get an earful from me. But you know that's not what he was telling his Badgers on the practice field and in the locker room. 
Huskies come on with that six game winning streak in home openers. Last time they lost was back in 85. Remember against Oklahoma State on first and 10 for the 15. Jay Barry gets a pretty good hole behind Darius Turner up near the 20 yard line. White Reese, one of the first in there, number 86, a linebacker, as well as Lamarck Shackerford, number 62, the nose guard. You see him here. Mike Thompson, keep an eye on him. He was uh, honorable mention, Big Ten as a freshman, pure freshman last year. And you see Fowler, Casper, and Norvell in the middle with Rafko and Dwight Reese, also all conference player, and the secondary for the Badgers. Second down and six from the 19 yard line. Hobart wanting to go deep. He's got a man wide open. Up at the 35, and it's crawling to the 40-yard line, and a first down for the Washington Huskies. Rafko, number 93, along with Jeff Messenger, number 29, make the stop. A 21-yard pass play. Can't imagine how many throws and catches these two have had together. Good protection again. Crawlick just finds a hole in, a hole in the zone and settles in. When you've got that much time, once again, it's hard to cover a guy that long. Billy Joe Hobart is going to find somebody. Nine and a half minutes to go, first quarter. Ball on the 40, and it's first and 10. Barry goes to the left side. Jordan here on the right side. Quick pass to Eric. Can't hold on. Pretty good defense by Dwight Reese, 86. Even though Wisconsin's a 34-point underdog in this game, they are not going to be intimidated by this Washington crowd or this Washington team. They're used to playing in hostile environments. When you have to go to Ann Arbor and Columbus, play in front of big crowds <laughs> and great football teams, they're, yeah. they're, not a, they're not afraid to be here. Second down and 10. Bjornsson again to the right side. Wide receiver left as well. Roll out. Looks for Mack. Intercepted first one of the year as Mark Bruner and Lincoln Kennedy combine to bring down number 37, Scott Nelson. Hobart's first pick of the year. And Wisconsin is giving the Huskies a lesson on how to play spirited football right now. We talked about the offense has to be consistent and not make mental mistakes. One of the rules of a quarterback is never throw late back over the middle. Billy Joe Hobart broke that rule last week and got a touchdown to Eric Bjornsson, but breaks it today and gives up an interception to Scott Nelson. Intended receiver was the fullback, Darius Turner. Nice pickup on the blitz, but after that, the execution breaks down. First and 10 on the 44 of Washington. Lustig and DeMarco Farr on the inside, and boy, they meet number 32, Mark Montgomery, in a hurry. They shifted in the perfect direction just before the snap. Both going to the left. Huskies have been favoring the strong side defensively with some late shifts. That time, DeMarco Farr and Mike Lustick put in perfect position by defensive coordinator Jim Lambright. Gain of only one yard. It's second down and nine with the ball on the 43 of Washington. Casillas again giving to the up man and testing the strength of Washington's interior lineman. And not getting much. Maybe two. Again, that was Montgomery, a junior out of St. Paul, Minnesota. Carried the ball 230 yards last year. There you see number 11. He's the backup quarterback. True freshman, Daryl Bevel, out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Quite a story. We'll talk about him as the day goes on. Third down and seven from the 41 after the gain of two. Macias wants to pass and way over the head of Lionel Crawford of Wisconsin. So it'll be fourth down. Huskies with three good defensive plays in that series. Macias one of three throwing the ball today. So Napoleon Kaufman had a 28 yard return on his first punt reception and return. And he's back now again to catch Sam Bites punt. There's Vite, and Kaufman stands on his own 10 yard line. And look for Vite to punt it either left or right. Oh my goodness, he's going right down the middle, but way too deep, so it'll go into the end zone. 
So the Huskies will get it on their own 20 yard line. We're still tied at seven after that punt by Mr. Sam Vike. Back in a moment. Staying home, number 62, Lamarck Shackerford. Tough kid out of Gary, Indiana. Tough and place to grow up. Get out of Gary, Indiana, you've got to be tough. And he's been nose to nose with quite a few Huskies already today. Here he goes nose to nose with Jim Neville and beats him to the play side. 6'1, 265. Jay Barry's carried the ball three times for a total of one yard. A lot of work to do for this Husky team, and they know it. It's second down and nine from the 21. Draw. Barry pops through into the secondary, short of the first down, but to the 27-yard line. Reggie Holt, number 10, coming up from the strong safety for the tackle, along with Mike Thompson. Man down. And it is, looks like Pete Caligas, who is one of the starting guards and has had numerous problems with his knees. And it looks like more of the same today. He is one of the strongest players on this Husky team. Quite possibly the strongest player they've ever had in the program here. Vince Press is well over 500 pounds. Caligas. Let's see if we can check out the injury on this replay. You see him from the left, left, guard. left guard position, number 56. Start getting piles rolling around. Uh, it's, uh, with all the problems he's had, it, to take a shot like that, unfortunately, Gary Casper well, he's trying to make a play. And Good to see him walking on it, Chuck. Yeah, you see the braces on both knees. He's do doing everything he can to protect those. They're braced and taped. He's been more or less a part-time player strictly because of injuries over the last couple of seasons. Was that Shackerford? I believe it was who went into him, 62. I mean, you try to imagine a man of his size, 260, 270 pounds going into your knee. Violent sport, tough sport. Lamarck's had a good day so far. There he is. Third down and three for Washington. And Hobart will throw. It's Shackerford again, laying it off to Barry. He's got to get up to the 30-yard line. Just gets there. Corey Manley, one of the first to get there defensively, the cornerback for the Wisconsin Badgers. Nice job by Jim Novell, the center, getting out on this screen pass. You can see, hold up Shackerford, hold him up, then release him. See 52 right there, gets enough of a shot on Gary Casper to get him on the ground and let Jay Berry get the nose of the ball past that 30-yard line and a first down. Aaron Norvell doing a good job defensively from his linebacker spot. Here comes Kaufman, look out. Oh, good defense by Norvell again, number 48. The right inside linebacker. Also, Lamarck Shackerford. Hey, this nose tackle is active. Covering a lot of ground. Let me get a look at Aaron Norvell. Six foot, 220 pounder, getting his first chance to start for a full season. He's been a great special teams player for Wisconsin, a big hitter. You can see here he's gonna lay a lick. Jim Neville tried to get, to get it to Shackerford, get him on the ground, get him out of the play. Second down and eight. Huskies want to go up. Bjornsson complete to the 40-yard line, just short of the first down. Reggie Holt, number 10, who was the leading tackler last year for this team, makes the tackle on Bjornsson. Next to the number two tackler in the Big Ten yeah. last year, sophomore All-American. He's a tremendous athlete, Reggie Holt. Was recruited as a quarterback, played wide receiver two years ago, and then moved last year to shore up that defense, and obviously did a great job. Number one in the Big Ten in First, pass defense and turnovers created. That can be deceiving, though. Leading in the pass defense, it means everybody's running on him. You have to make those, <laughs> those turnover stat, though, is awfully impressive. They're down and one. Billy Joe, a little improvising. Now he's in the open. Gets away from one man. Foot race. He's gone. I don't believe it. What a play by Billy Joe Hobart. Billy Joe Hobart. 
Not bad for ad-libbing, huh? Wisconsin fans are certainly reminded of Elroy Crazy Lakes Hirsch on that play. <laughs> or Bobby Slorett in the Rose Bowl in 1960. You can see him demonstrating his moves to Miles York. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> he was by dead to rights going down for a loss. And a little improvising gives him 60 yards and six points and make it seven as the Huskies put their second TD on the board here in the first quarter. Hanson with the boot, 453 remaining here in the first quarter in Seattle. Not exactly the way you draw that option play up. Option play, one of the most successful for the Huskies last week, both of Kaufman's big runs. Last week, we're on the option. Hovert had a 21-yard run last week, his longest run from scrimmage, and he triples that with this 60-yarder. You can see Matt Jones goes in motion. The option is designed to go to the left, but that peripheral vision of Billy Joe Hobart kicks in, and now the speed. Hey, folks, this guy's 225 pounds. <laughs> he recognizes he's not going to outrun Melvin Tucker, so he makes that move. He got the angle, the old angle on a free safety. Get him spinning around. You can see all that pursuit flows to this side. And once Hobart gets through this pile back on the back side, it's just he and Melvin Tucker. And up, up, and away it goes 225 pounds. And, and there he goes. That puts Billy Joe into the top 10 all time, all purpose yards category for the Huskies, too. Burns, we've seen what he can do with the ball. Trying to get around Lewis Jones and is brought down at about the 37 yard line. Another quick drive by the Huskies. Boy, when they put the mind to it, away they go. Six plays, 60 of that coming on the run. 18 yard return on that previous kickoff, by the way, by Jason Burns. Don James, a graduate of Miami, he'll play his alma mater. Here in a couple of years, Billy Joe sitting down and probably talking to Jeff Woodruff, the offensive coordinator upstairs up here where we are. First and 10 on the 38-yard line after the return by Burns. Mark Montgomery, the fullback, as they set it up, going up the middle on first down. Mark just a junior after he gets four yards on that play. Wisconsin defense. Trying to figure out what went wrong on that play. Did not have a 225-pound quarterback being able to well, go 60 yards. This team tries to play defense much like Washington and California with that 5-2 or attacking, aggressive defense. They over-pursued. Second down and six. And underestimated the speed of Billy Joe Hobart. Little pitch, Andy Mason hits the quarterback trying to get outside as Fletcher. And kaboom. Walter Bailey and company. We're finally getting a look at Terrell Fletcher now as Shane Falcoa delivered the hit. One of the keys to playing good defense is maintaining leverage. Playing the option is an assignment. You see Andy Mason has his assignment. Lewis Jones covers his assignment, but he loses his leverage. Shane Falcoa is there to get Fletcher out of bounds. Brings up a fourth down and three. Third down. Third down and three, excuse me. Terrell, just a sophomore. On third and three, interesting formation. There goes DeRamus and the rollout, throwing all the way. He's got the option to run and will not get the first down. Well, I shouldn't be so bold to say that. Let's wait. That's who you ask. Michael yeah. Rowan, the tight end, says he's got the first down. But the man in stripes says he does not. DeMarco Farr making the stop and a timely stop as he came over from the defensive line position. So Lionel Crawford, the backup wide receiver who has been a quarterback in this program in the past, they like him on short yardage option situations. We saw them come up there at fourth and three and two tight ends and run the option with Lionel Crawford. He missed all of last year with a bad knee and was playing quarterback and wide receiver. Started a quarterback in 1988 and 1989 Moved to receiver in 90. 
And a timeout has been called. Let's see, we've got a flag. What, delay? Wisconsin All trying right. to pull a little dipsy do there. Crawford is the up back in punt formation. He's trying to come up to the line of scrimmage. <laughs> ends up calling a. Wow, the flag went down. They called timeout just before the clock went out. So Barry Alvarez dodging the bullet of a five yard penalty as well. Catch women's college soccer tomorrow night at 6 o'clock as the Gonzaga Bulldogs go up against the Washington State Cougars. That's tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, here on Prime Sports Northwest. Don James with that 88 28 and 1 record against Pac 10 opponents. Picked up number 88 the other night down in the Valley of the Sun against Arizona State. In his 18th year, 21 total years of coaching. And of course, kind of bowl games, 12 out of the last 13 years. 13 overall. You name it, he's done it. <laughs> Did I leave anything I, out, Chuck? You were naming them all, so I was, I was just laying low. Oh. What a career. Fourth down for the Badgers. Bite is back to punt. And again with Hoffman back on his 11-yard line waiting. Husky's a little leery. They got Josh Moore and Walter Bailey moving back and forth on the wings. Hoffman takes it. Uh oh, oh, good. Wisconsin bounce. No, it goes into the end zone. He had it. <laughs> a 53-yard punt. Number 21, Rodney Shelton, a backup running back, had it inside the one-yard line. Special teams, an area that Barry Alvarez takes a lot of pride in. This team downed eight punts inside the five-yard line last oh. year, and they had their shot right here. <laughs> Rodney Shelton. Oh. I tell you, Sam Veit's not very happy. When you're a punter and you oh, hit one yeah. like that, you feel like you've done your part, and all of a sudden your team defense is lining up back on the 20-yard line. First and 10 from the 20. Hoffman, one man to get around. First down up to the 38-yard line. It's simply a joy just to watch him as Scott Nelson, the free safety, is able to run him out of bounds. 17-yard run by the sophomore. He does such a good job, does Napoleon Kaufman, of creating his own space. You do not have to make a very big hole in order for him to pick up some yardage because he is so shifty that he moves away from virtually everybody while go. maintaining his speed. First to 10 from the 37. Two receivers now to the right. Matt Jones gets outside the 40 to the 41 yard line. Aaron Norvell made the stop. Number 48. First carry of the year for Matt Jones. That's right. He didn't carry the ball against Arizona State. Darius Turner got the start and carried six times. So a four-yard gain for Mr. Jones as Kaufman lines up behind Billy Joe. Second and six. Play action. Heat. Trying to go to Ernie Conwell, the tight end, but good pressure by White Reese, number 86. Over holding that left arm, left shoulder, like it's not yeah. not 100% there. But of course, you get 225 pounds driving it into the Astro turf. That'll make you uh, wait a while before you start waving it around. Reese, there he is, a senior out of San Jose, coming out home to the West Coast to play today. Third down and six with receivers to each side. Hobart looking short, now looking the other direction. Got a man, first down, Washington. Complete to Damon Berry, his first catch of the year. Didn't get to play last week, as you know, and he's brought down by Dwight Reese. So Berry's in the record books for 1992. There have not been that many questions about the ability of these Washington receivers. They just, because of the depth last year, didn't have a chance to get on the field all that much. And you've got some players like Mac and Barry, Krolik and Bjornsson. You're just going to roll them out there and let them show what they can do. First and 10 now. They're in the Badger territory at the 46, and Billy Joe wants a timeout. He had Barry and Bjornsson out to the right side. <laughs> he and Matt Jones together trying to figure out what went 
what went on there. He's going to have to go explain to the coaching staff what Matt told him. We may see big number 11 on the left of your screen. Mark Brunell in the second quarter. And pattern holds normally to what we saw against Arizona State and what Don James has said. Get a look, look at Al Avan there. The new running back coach for the Washington Huskies there behind Billy Joe Hobart. We'll look. catch more college football action tomorrow night as the Oregon Ducks take on the Stanford Cardinal. That's tomorrow night at 8 o'clock here on Prime Sports Northwest. Rich Brooks against Bill Walsh. Walsh in his second debut, you might say, down on the farm, his home opener after losing in the Big Skin Classic against Texas A&M. And I think most folks, Chuck, went away from that game saying, hey, Stanford's got a better defense than most people thought. They've got some great athletes. Ron George, certainly one of the premier defensive players in the Pac-10, played awfully well in that Texas A&M game. They just weren't able to hold down the fort quite long enough. His day so far. At the one pick, but he's got a touchdown pass to Kralik already to match it. First and 10 from the 46. Looking deep, pumps once, go deep, left side, no. Going for the freshman, Jason Shelley, who had one reception against Arizona State last week. Little speed there by the youngster. He certainly outran Corey Manley. <laughs> Get a look at the protection for Billy Joe Hobart. Everybody going deep. It's like the backyard play. Run as far as you can. I'm going to throw it to one of you. He wanted to go right. Comes back to Jason Shelley, who has a couple of steps on Corey Manley. Ball just not quite within his grasp. Second down and 10, still at the 46. Two wide receivers right side this time. Kaufman could be in trouble. He's able to get around the corner at least and made something out of what could have been nothing but bad news. Short of the first down, but down to the 38. <laughs> One of the assistant coaches talking to the ref about something there. We've seen how shifting Napoleon Kaufman can be in traffic inside. Here you get a look at what he can do outside. See, he sets up Reggie Holt with the inside move there. He gets what he can. Holt and Nelson making the stop. Took the two safeties to get him cornered. And he's still diving for the first down marker. You love to see that as a coach and a fan. Anybody with that kind of effort. Nobody in the backfield on third and two. Kaufman lining up at the H back, and he may be short of the first down. Oh, excuse me, it was Mac. I'm sorry. Looked like number eight from 38 stories up here. <laughs> Reggie hold on the stop. They do give him the first down. When you only need two yards, it doesn't take very long. Just as soon as Billy Joe can get five fingers on it, he flops it out there to David Mack. Two yards is all they needed. That's all they got. High school ball, we used to call that the old looking pass. Being From a tight end, I like the one they called the old look in fast. <laughs> From a quarterback perspective, the thing you have to make sure you do is get a grip on the ball. You're in such a hurry to get it out there. Sometimes you get it from the center and you don't even hold it. You just kind of shot put it out there. Mack lining up on the right side this time. A lot of time. Flag goes down as Matt Jones makes the catch, but we got the old penalty going down behind Billy Joe. Aaron Norvell, the linebacker on the tackle. Has that look, look of a hold. Good penetration early by Wisconsin. Pete Pearson might have gotten some sticky fingers on the play. Wisconsin came into this game with a lot of youngsters. Their two deep chart showed nine sophomores, seven juniors, only six seniors. The offense alone starts seven sophomores. If there are any more veterans in one place than the other the defense with a fair number of uh, I think they have I believe nine either juniors or seniors yes starting so Don James team going against a lot of youngsters with the exception of this defense you're going against youngsters with experience yeah so they returned 19 starters so you see Barry Alvarez came in and really his first couple years he's he was going to start his people, his recruits, and so these people as freshmen and sophomores got a lot of playing time. Now they're, they may be a junior or sophomore, but they've started. After the penalty, first and 25. Billy Joe looking deep again, thinking, I got the speed. I'm going to my people. Complete down to the 35, the 30. Crawley's got the first down. Does he? Close. So all in one big bite. The ball is thrown to Crawley. 
Gary Casper, the linebacker, inside linebacker, gets him and knocks him out of bounds. Once again, you see what protection can do and how much pressure it puts on those defensive backs to cover people for seemingly endless periods of time. Billy Joe Holbert has time to check out absolutely everybody and then has enough arm strength to absolutely gun this ball over the outside linebacker and get it to Krolik. <laughs> David Max trying to get a block and trying to get out of the way at the same time. <laughs> Good nifty running by Mr. Krolik. There's the first down. Matt Jones on the carry. So Jones getting a little more work this week than last. When you've got first and 25, you're not thinking about getting it all back in one chunk. You're thinking about, okay, let's get half of it and set ourselves up in a second and medium and then work on a third and short. But, boy, it's nice to get 24, and then you can just run that dive and pick up the first. First and 10 from the 24. This will be the last play from the first, for the first quarter. Hoffman. Dipping and dodging and getting down to the 21-yard line. Yusef Burgess, number 98, chasing him out of bounds. He has 32 yards here in the first half. He was not the players in the country who can generate the excitement in a stadium like Napoli and Kaufman can. Yusef, by the way, out of the Bronx, New York, and Napoleon Kaufman, player of the week in the Pac-10 for his 159 yards from scrimmage and another 91 on special teams. 250-yard day. Second down and seven, ball on the 21. Hoffman again. Oh, great defense by Wisconsin. Coming in was number 98, Yusuf Burgess again. He's the junior out of the Bronx, as I said. Only 26 tackles last year, but he's made two that'll make him all Big Ten so far in this ball game. The end of the first quarter. An exciting and interesting one, to say the least. Keep everybody up late tonight, huh, Chuck? <laughs> We'll be back here at Husky Stadium. First quarter is in the books. Over Wisconsin of the Big Ten. Setting you up. Third down and eight on the 22 of Wisconsin for the Huskies as Joe Crawley goes in motion. Back to throw. Going deep. Crawley! No. Too far as Krolik was trying to come up with his second TD catch of the day. Oh, Joe's got the elbow pads. He's got the wristbands. He's got the spats. He looks good out there. He's looking there. good. He's looking He's good. He's looking good. That's right. <laughs> Runs a nice post corner, takes the man inside, goes back outside. Ball just thrown outside the boundary. He never really gets a shot at it. Those two, once again, and on the, the same wavelength. Did I say the gloves, too? 39-yard attempt by Travis Hansen. Long enough, and it is good. So Hansen coming off a 42-yarder against Arizona State here with my, what might be an official of 39-and-a-half to 40-yard field goal. So the Huskies go up by 10. Interesting rotation on the ball that time, Chuck. Well, style points don't count for much in kicking. I always said good's good. <laughs> okay, now you watch this. Now, this, this tells me he put his foot just about in the middle of the ball, almost a satellite it's kick. It's like hitting a golf ball. You want to hit the thing on the bottom half to get it going end over end. This ball is going end over end maybe once or twice, but it's, going, <laughs> but it's doing it straight. That's right. That's the idea. You ask a kicker in a game situation, you want to hit a good kick that's wide or a bad kick that's straight, and you'll get a funny look, because all they want to do is make it go through. Travis now two of three for the season, with his longest still being 42 yards against Arizona State. Nice confidence builder both for Travis and the coaching staff. Well, they've talked about the strong, definite improvement he made over the spring. Really kind of began with his two field goals in the Rose Bowl. The offense works that hard to get the ball down there that far, too. You want to be able to capitalize it, and as they you did. see, the Huskies did with the 39-yarder. 13-play drive. We talked about offensive consistency and how they don't have to do anything spectacular. That's the way to do it. And there's Lee DeRamus. 
who as I said at the top of the broadcast had a 50 yard kickoff return against the Gophers of Minnesota one of the last couple games of the 1991 season in which they won Wisconsin that big kick to the left side again Doremus comes out to his own nine yard line they try to corner him on the sideline works pretty well as he gets up to the 25 yard line wrestling around like maybe there was a possible fumble number 26 James Bible or Russell Hairston in there Hairston it was since there's a double number on the team a couple of those so the ball the 26 yard line it'll be first and 10 for Wisconsin they have seven points on the board and they trail by 10 as Lionel Crawford now comes out as a wide receiver he's played quarterback and the W.R. position so far today first and 10 Montgomery goes in motion that's who they throw to. Check that. It's Crawford who gets up to the 31 yard line and is stopped by Dave Hoffman along with James Clifford. First quarter numbers. Here they are. Washington in the passing department and rushing department and total yards. The one turnover, the interception of Billy Hobart's pass. Only one penalty on the Huskies and time of possession pretty doggone close. As Macias is back in at quarterback and looking at second down and five. Doremus in motion, got a flag down, dead ball call. Wasn't the 25 second clock. Fletcher had the ball on the pitch as Barry Alvarez tries to find out what happens. There you go. It'll be second down in 10 instead of second and five. And Barry leading his case. <laughs> he learned this from Digger Phelps when he was an assistant at, uh, you know, the, at Notre Dame, watching Digger with work, basketball. Working the refs. I don't yeah, understand. It's, it's an illegal procedure call. What's the, what's the argument? <laughs> the guy moved or he didn't. It's not like it's an interpretation. <laughs> I didn't see a move, ref. <laughs> Second down and five. Need to get out to the 36. Second and ten, I should say. They try to go deep into Ramos. No. Walter Bailey giving chase behind Lee. It'll be third down and 10 from the 26. Two tight end formation, one wide receiver right, one wide receiver left, everybody else blocks. Macias lays it out there. The speed of Doremus gets some separation between he and Walter Bailey with the ball thrown a little bit too wide for Doremus to go get it. He had an 89 yard reception for touchdown last year as a freshman. Longest pass play in Wisconsin Badger history. That's right. Third down and 10. Crawford comes in along with Fletcher. A little more speed. Macias bullet pass to Doremus. Jaime Fields, though, there along with Dave Hoffman. So it'll be first and fourth down. And Dave Hoffman, arguably the best interior linebacker in college football. Made some All-American teams last, last year as one of the nominees at this point for the Butkus Award, the best linebacker in the country he'll, overall. He'll make the final cut, guarantee you. Kaufman back waiting with that impressive 22-yard average against ASU. Off the side of the foot, low, wobbly kick. Hits his own teammate. And it comes to rest at the 36-35 yard line. So Husky ball with 13-31 remaining in the second quarter as Sam Vites punt. It's one of his teammates. It wasn't all that healthy coming off his foot anyway. <laughs> that, one. that duck was flying low. Kaufman had a chance there to make a big play. Once that ball hits somebody, it is effectively down but still in play. Napoleon Kaufman can pick that ball up with nothing to lose. So the ball, thing, yeah. First thing that can happen is it comes back to the original touch. First and 10 then at the 39 yard line with two receivers wide to the right. Jay Barry gets into the secondary where he is brought down by Corey Manley, number 24, the cornerback who had to come in to make the play. Huskies go with a two tight end formation of their own. Mark Bruner and Ernie Conwell. Husky coaching staff feels very comfortable with those two players. Conwell redshirted last year as a freshman. Bruner played last year as a freshman, so pretty well stocked at the tight end position thus far. 
Barry has 16 yards so far. Goes in motion this time on second and one. Going for more. Conwell with the reception. And that's his first as a Husky. Being only a redshirt freshman, as Chuck noted earlier. So he is now officially in the press guide in 1993. Got a, got a chicken scratch instead of a zero. Right. He'll be in the records, I should say. Well, they talked the, about the strength at the tight end position and the perhaps weakness at the wide receiver position. Husky coaches will find a way to get their best pass receivers on the field, be they tight ends or receivers. Obert, 8 of 13 at 100 yards today. Lots of time asking people to come back to help. Finally has to throw it away. No. No interception by Jefferson, number 29. Hobart still talking to his receivers with motioning, come back, come back, which indeed you're supposed to do when your quarterback is scrambling. Mark Bruner was about 25 yards downfield and unaware that Billy Joe was in trouble and had rolled out this way. So a mistake made on the part of some of the people downfield. A mistake made by Billy Joe Hobart there is obviously he had made the decision to throw it away. If you're going to throw it away, throw it away. Don't even make it that close. Second down and 10. Quick hitter to Barry. Barry against Manley. Muscles his way down to the 39-yard line. Need another five yards for the first down. Pick up a five. That play designed to you get the ball to a player who is one-on-one -on -one with a defender. Put the responsibility on that offensive player to make that defender miss. Darius Turner coming in to play fullback. Crawley goes out to the right side along with Damon Mack. Third down and five. Barry. Turner trying to lead the way. Barry trying to get around the corner and nothing doing. Great pursuit by the Badgers as Reggie Holt gets up there to wrap his arms around Barry, number 10. Reggie, who was recruited as a quarterback initially, played as a wide receiver, and as we said earlier, was the team's top tackler in 1991. Well-rounded, talented athlete. So fourth and six, Wardell, John Wardell back to punt. His first punt today, and we're at the 11:40 mark of the second quarter. That's the way it's supposed to work. He had nine punts last week. Going for the right corner, high spiral. Now it's coming right down the middle and too far. So let's take a break with 11:25 remaining in the second quarter, and the lead remains at 10 for the Huskies, 17 to seven. will tell you that he has improved as a quarterback since his knee injury two years ago. Much more touch on the ball, much more vision on the field. This one drops over the safety or over the corner, Scott Man or Corey Manley, and in front of Scott Nelson. Nice route, nice throw. Husky first down at the 23. 20-yard play. Brunel across the middle, goes to the tight end, Bruner. Down to the 16-yard line. Scott Nelson on the stop. Keep in mind, last year, I believe Mark Brunell was involved in 27 possessions, and on 10 of them, they scored, the Huskies. He's been very successful in his limited playing time. Contrast that last throw with the throw previous to that. We had one with a nice touch. That one, he knew that he didn't have much time, so he zipped it in there. That's what you like to see in a quarterback. You can throw the hard, bow, hard ball and the touch ball. And Brunel looking at second down and three. He's got two receivers to the right side. Turner, nice move. Gets the first down. Close to it at least. Let's see where they give him the forward progress. Gary Casper with the tackle. They give him four yards, which should be enough for the first down. Turner now with the 11 yards on two carries. Gary Casper saying, what's it going to take? And Turner playing well today, very well. Nice to see a healthy Darius Turner missed a large part of the first half of last year with a bad back. Matt Jones filled in ably, but it's nice to have some depth at that fullback position. Bjornsson, Krolik, and Shelley all to the left side. And 
here comes the heat. Dwight Reese shooting from his linebacker spot. Number 86 making the play. Huskies try to spread the field. You said, Don, three wide receivers left. Napoleon Kaufman to the right. Quarterback draw here, but there's no place for Mark Brunel to even get started. See, Lincoln Kennedy does his bit. But Mark Brunel has no choice but to just take the loss. Mike Thompson also in there, the sophomore, a defensive tackle who was all Big Ten last year as a freshman. The rollout. Turner and Krolik, the two receivers on that side on third down. One thing about Mark Brunell to show what kind of respect they have for this young man. He's still a finalist for the Johnny Unitas Award for the top senior quarterback in the country. As you said, he's played well in his limiting play, limited playing time. This one, however, not, not on target unless you're playing in Canada. That wide field. That was second down. I correct myself. It is now third and 13. And again, three to the left side with Kaufman right behind Brunel. Looking left, they're all over their corner. Krolik against Holt. No flag. Reggie Holt in the middle of it. Reggie Holt makes a successful play again. The try for the touch pass to the corner. Krolik the only one making a play on the ball. Reggie Holt makes a play on the receiver. Got there a little bit before the ball. We could have seen a flag on that one. Joe Krolik certainly thinks so. Travis Hansen to try a 33-yard field goal, almost dead center. Eric Bjornsson holding. Bruce Bailey with a snap. Lenny a distance, and it looks good. So now, a 32-yarder along with a 39-yard field goal today for Hampson. He is two for two for the day and three of four for the season. We'll be back. Just yeah. want to get on and play some play some ball. Especially when you're playing in November in Green Bay. <laughs> enough is enough. Hanson to boot. Doremus coming up. No, oh, it'll be another up man again. Who fumbles at the 10. Now he's in big trouble. And brought down at the 13. He is number 31. Matt Nequist, a backup fullback. Husky's doing some little dipsy doos again on the kickoffs. Just trying to hang it up a little bit shorter. Keep it out of Doremus's hands. You know who you always find Successful coming up the, that time. the bottom of the pile on kickoff returns is always Leif Johnson, number 34. Always involved in the tackle, one way or another. Every team has a guy or wants a guy that can make those kind of plays, and he's going to run down there and throw his forehand at somebody. Badgers so far with 101 total yards for the day. And three first downs to Washington's 12. Here's Burns again trying to pop loose. No can do. As Shane Palcoa was in there along with Dave Hoffman. It's a play that Arizona State had a lot of success with offensively last week. Counter Trey, you bring those two big people from the backside. The running back delays a little bit. Just follows those two big bucks. I don't think uh, Andy Mason could rip his right leg man much higher than it is already <laughs> for that brace. Trey at the left defensive end spot. Right leg, it's all the way up to his hip. Second down and six after the four-yard game by Burns. The Ramos in motion, a little delay. And Fletcher up to the 20 or checked out the 19-yard line. Short of the first down as Keith Bavidi involved. Look at that up from the backside. <laughs> yeah, you can't tell from that angle. But from the sideline camera, you can you, you can see he's had to make a lot of room for that knee brace. He injured his leg, what, on a jet ski this summer? Not the kind of phone call that a coach wants to get in the middle of the summer. Coach, I'm going to be a little slow at the start of training camp. I just fell off my jet ski. <laughs> Some movement, maybe by Chuck Bellin, their all-conference guard for Wisconsin. Let's wait and see. <laughs> against the guys in white. Oh, 
So it'll be third down and eight yards from their own 15 yard line. After that initial long run by Jason Burns and the ensuing touchdown, it's been pretty quiet on the part of the Badgers. First quarter touchdown, which really shocked Husky players and fans alike. Third down and eight. For the play action, Macias throwing short. Incomplete. To Tim Ware, number 15. Defended by Josh Moore along with Lewis Jones. So it's time to punt for the Badgers. Right now, Macias is three of nine for 27 yards today throwing. Huskies with 258 total yards to Wisconsin's 108. There were 48 of that came on the one play. Yes. There he is. How'd you like to have to punt the ball to that man <laughs> and try to help your 10 teammates stopping by giving him a good high punt? This time a deep punt, not terribly high. He could wreak havoc. Let's see if he gets around the corner. Nope. Oh, he gets through. I don't believe it. That was 10 magic yards. I can't believe it. They had him dead to rights back on the 35, and Coffin still springs loose. Let's see if he's all right. Tommy Smith keeping an eye on him. Oh. Uh, banged up a foot or a knee. Now watch this. We saw Barry Alvarez not talking about kicking the ball to the boundary. Kick the darn thing down the middle of the field and bang it. He should be down right there. Right there, you see. <laughs> Everybody's in position to make a play, but Napoleon Kaufman is just that good. And they're down to one healthy starting tailback right now, though, and that's Jay Barry. First to 10, Barry in the backfield. Cuts back, can't get away from traffic, however, as Aaron Norvell, one of the first to get there. Sellout crowd today, officially 72,800. And the weather has certainly cooperated, at least from our spot up here in the crow's nest. Not as windy as usual. It's amazing how it can be 20 degrees colder <laughs> where you and I stand, Chuck, uh, than it is normally out there. <laughs> suspended from the ceiling with nothing below you but a slab of aluminum. Second down and nine, and Brunel trying to go to the wing. Ooh, Reggie Holt there just as the reception is made by Darius Turner. Again, that ball take, takes a while to get there. Darius Turner does a good job of keeping his body between Reggie Holt and the ball coming up with the catch. Hard to get much juice on it when you get the pressure and forced to throw off of your back foot. Coming into this game, Mark Brunel at 2,641 total yards in offense right in there with Billy Joe Hobart at 26.58. Both only need about 20, 30 yards to pass Greg Lewis and become number 10. So the pass, there you see, to Eric Bjornsson and defended by Dwight Reese. Both of these gentlemen could be in the top 10, the rate they're going by the end of the day. It's a simple get enough yardage for the first down out route. I'll throw it to you. You see, he can put some zip on it, can Mark Brunel, when he gets a chance to step up. Very smart play by Bjornsson. Make sure and run that route deep enough, just enough for the first down. I like Bjornsson at 6'5 and the soft hands. Good little receiver, or not so little. First and 10 for now from the 45. Wisconsin going deep. Shelley. And he is met by Scott Nelson, number 37, in midair. Shelley, two times now, has had a shot at going deep, but. Ball not quite there. Nice job by number 37, Scott Nelson. You see him at the bottom of the screen. Huskies have Mark Bruner running down the middle of the field. Nelson does a good job of playing both sides. Brunel chooses to go down the sideline to Shelley. Scott Nelson was in position to make a great play. Prolick, Mack, Bjornsson. Wide to the left side on second and 10 from the Badger 45. Plenty of time, gonna run now instead. As Brunel comes up short of the first down, but gets to the 37-yard line of Wisconsin. Still take a deep breath when he tucks the ball under his arm. Your first thought when Mark Brunel starts to run is, how is that knee going to hold up? It's been a while now. He says it's as healthy as ever. Good coverage downfield. He's got time to throw. He also has time to pick up eight yards on <laughs> second and ten. Yeah, he had more time. I think he just saw too much AstroTurf, decided to go for it. 
Gary Casper and Scott Nelson on the tackle. The old habits die hard. <laughs> he knows he can be successful putting it under his arm. Third down and three as we're coming up on the two-and-a-half-minute mark in the first half. Pitch to Barry. Turner with a block, but no place for Barry to go. Let's see where they mark. Oh, they're marking it clear back on the 38, so he'll be short of the first. Hard to run that option into the short side. Things get a little crowded sometimes. Brings up a fourth and one. Aaron Norvell did a nice job holding off the blocks to make that tackle, or at least get Barry out of bounds. There it is. Not very far, and Brunel will stay in. And Alvarez defense will try to back the Huskies up. A real confidence builder for the Husky offense to be successful. The Wisconsin fans, a large number. A lot of red. Of, yeah, a lot of red. Boom are here. That's all those Midwestern Scandinavians uh -huh. end up out here in the great Northwest. I tell you. You could darn near match uh, scenery for scenery between Wisconsin and Washington. Wisconsin, a beautiful state. We had to say that because our producer is a graduate of Wisconsin's, Steve Woodruff. Let me ask this. Well, we, well, we have a timeout. We Kaufman. Uh, be some skilled people there for yeah. the Huskies. Damon Heward be the quarterback. We'll see. All right, fourth and one. 2.28 to go here in the first half. Barry goes in motion. It'll be the fullback, Turner, and he muscles his way for about five down to the 31-yard line. Gary Casper and Aaron Nervell, the two inside linebackers on the tackle. That's why enough yardage was gained for the first down. You knew if you could get Darius Turner past the lineman and to the linebackers, give Darius Turner a four-yard head start at you. He's going to deliver a blow. And the interior linemen for the Huskies do the job. First and 10 now on the 32. Brunel, again the time, got the receiver, can't quite connect with Damon Mack. Aaron Nervell defending. So he had a wide receiver going against a linebacker. Good protection again. Tries to put the touch on it here, get it. Get it out to Mac. Ooh. He gets enough fingers on the one point, but just can't haul it back in. Huskies continue to be fairly balanced in terms of their offensive yardage. 145 yards passing, 138 yards rushing thus far. Murray. I bet it was Reese. Yes, it was. Number 86, Dwight Reese. Seven tackles for loss last year. Big play type of player, 6'3", 220, a guy that can run and is big. Coming from, see the left side of your screen. Coming on the weak side, I know Frank Garcia held his hands up like, how are you going to stop him? Well, Frank can't. He's playing interior or the guard position. But that's one of Reese's jobs. He's, he's the Donald Jones of Wisconsin. Line up and rush the pass. <laughs> right, or the, or the Jaime Fields. Third down and 16 after the loss. Across the middle, got him. To number 21, Damon Berry, his second reception today. Is it far enough for the first down? It looks about, oh, that's very close. You're holding up your fist, Mr. Nelson. I guess you're saying it's fourth down. Fourth down. We saw Eric Bjornsson make the nice play on the third down out route, getting enough for the first down. Third down route, you've got to make sure and run it deep enough to get yourself a first. Good protection here and a well-delivered ball. Good job by Damon Berry to make the catch. Unfortunately, can't even make one step. Fourth down. Turner got it. Down to the 20, just inside the 20, and he got two yards out of the play. Again, a good job by those big guys up front. Lavelle, Garcia, Tom Gallagher, Andrew Peterson getting enough of a push. But yet again, 235 pounds of DT. Clock is stopped with 40 seconds here in the first half to move the chains up. First and 10, just inside the 20-yard line. 37 seconds, clock running. Got his man, out of bounds, Turner. Interesting connection between Brunel and Turner so far in the second quarter. Either handoffs or passes. See, Mark Brunel wanted to run this ball for a second here. The thought came through his mind <laughs> right about here. He starts to go, but 
he's not sure he can get it out of bounds and stop the clock. A nice play by the quarterback, Mark Brunel, and by Darius Turner. The Huskies must get a seven out of this one. They've had to settle for two field goals already. They would like to get seven points out of this drive. Mark, six of 10, 60 yards so far. Back to throw again. 11th attempt again to Darius Turner. They have the first down. The time getting to be a bit tight now with 22 seconds remaining. First down, of course, will stop the clock. Huskies have time to get organized. They have one timeout remaining. Okay, that's it. They have just used it. And Mark Brunell, as I said, 10 of 27 drives last year in scoring. Trying to do it here again in 1992. Be sure to catch Big Sky football this Tuesday as the Boise State Broncos go head to head with the Idaho State Bengals. That's this Tuesday night, 7 o'clock Pacific, here on Prime Sports Northwest. Comfortable afternoon for Husky football, the home opener as Barry Alvarez and his linebacker Gary Casper, number 57, talk it out. Alvarez coached at Notre Dame, as we mentioned, under Lou Holtz and then under Hayden Fry. And has come in and has established a whole new attitude, as you have to. Keep in mind, before he came in, the Badgers won a total of nine games in the pre previous four years before Barry came in. That's about, what, 2.25 victories per year in your football season. Well, their five and six record of last year was more victories than they'd had in those three previous years combined. This is a, a different season opener than he had in mind. Last year they opened with Western Illinois. So he likes to get one under his belt at a lower division opponent. It's one way to win five games, but there's no doubt that they've made progress in that program. First time they've come into a season with a winning streak in some time. They won their last two last year over Minnesota and Northwestern. Well, he's an old Cornhusker. Terry Alvarez graduated from Nebraska in 1969. Now he's in the Big Ten and fighting a Pac-10 team that is threatening. First and goal from the nine. 22 seconds to go, first half. Brunel, incomplete. That'll clock the stop. Uh, clock the stop. Stop the clock. <laughs> Got bass backwards there. <laughs> You're getting your merge wixed up. <laughs> so it'll be second and goal from the nine. Reggie Holt defending. <laughs> I'll stay up late to watch that one again. <laughs> 17 seconds. It's nice to have a quarterback like Mark Brunel who can run the ball, though, when you've got a clock situation like this because he's able to get some yards for you. Husky's down inside the 10-yard line. Mark Brunel can cover eight and a half yards in a hurry. Brolic, Bjornsson, and Mack to the left side. Jay Berry behind him to the left. Bullet pass going for Bjornsson. No flag. Two fans thought Eric might have been held back. Jeff Messenger, number 29, was the man defending. Second, look. second time today that Reggie Holt has drawn the wrath of this home faithful crowd, but not the flag from the official. See Eric Bjornsson definitely thrown off stride by something before the ball gets there. Yeah, Reggie in there as opposed to Messenger. Reggie's one of those, like, like one of those guys that always seems to be something going on when he's around, but you can never point the finger at him. You just can't pin anything on him. Third and goal from the nine, 13 seconds left. You're right, third time they've been up here, they need to get a touchdown, not a third field goal. And again, they look from behind, down he goes with nine, eight seconds, seven, no timeouts remaining. That's gonna do it for the half. Oh, that'll leave a bad taste in your mouth. As Brunel goes down from behind and Wisconsin dodges the bullet. And they go into the locker room down by 13 rather than by 20. It's 20 to 7. We're at halftime. The quarterback core for the Huskies heads for the locker room. And we'll return here to Husky Stadium in just a moment. Very pleasant here at Husky Stadium as we start the third quarter. Washington won the toss at the beginning of the game and deferred and they have chosen to receive now here in the second half Don James halfway towards his 13th victory in a row against the Big Ten team counting bowl games as well 
And Barry Alvarez in his first meeting as a head coach against Don James down 20 to 7. But a lot of good young talent on this Wisconsin team that went five and six last year with many freshmen. Something like a Dick Tomey in Arizona where they started nine freshmen last year at Arizona. Wisconsin much the same. And eventually that time and those hard knocks will pay off when they become sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And Napoleon Kaufman awaits the kick from number 18, Rich Thompson. Thompson, who has four letters already. One year, Chuck was telling us he came up with an ulcer and got a medical red shirt, but he had played enough to gain a letter. So he already has four letters and is now going after his fifth. They're going to take two jackets. Yeah, that's right. He'll have blankets, jackets. He'll start his own <laughs> badger paraphernalia <laughs> store in Madison. You don't see many of those. Where's he from? Uh, Skia took Oklahoma. Maybe not. Not a lot. Big demand for Badger clothing in Oklahoma. <laughs> well, you never know how many people are in Skia took. Every... That's right. He might be the. His family probably half the population of Skia took. <laughs> Time to play ball. 20 to 7, Washington. The Badgers have not played all that badly. Boot into the end zone, and Kaufman will let it fly. Through the end zone, touchback. Here's what Washington did with the ball in the first half. Of course, a two-play drive to get on the scoreboard, then the interception. That seemed to wake things, wake, wake up the Huskies. And then a six-play touchdown drive, the field goal. Only one punt in the entire first half, Chuck. Offensively, again, almost 300 yards, 297 yards, 20 points. Again, the, the idea of moving the ball is you've got to try to get points out of it. Huskies with 297 total yards in the first half, and Billy Joe Hobart back at quarterback as Crawley goes in motion. And they give to Matt Jones, and nothing doing. That darn nose guard by the name of Lamarck Shackelford back in there again, number 62, along with Gary Casper, the inside linebacker, and it's a loss of one. Very good defensive team with some great individual players. You see Shackerford just eats and beats Andrew Peterson to the inside, to the play side. He's able to ride Matt Jones to the ground. A junior out of Gary, Indiana, is having himself quite a game. He had two tackles for loss in all of last year. He had one right there already. Second down. And the pass complete to Damon Mack, the senior out of Gardena, California, and Aaron Norvell makes the stop. They'll give him seven yards, so it's third down and three. And a timeout called by the officials. See the replay, you see Mack just runs across the field and gets ahead of Norvell. Bell and Holt got to knock each other down. That's what the timeout is. Norvell walks off the field under his own power, but he's not sure which day of the week it is. Matt Jones back in for Eric Bjornsson for the Huskies. So it's third down and three after the seven-yard completion to Damon Mack. Quick hitter, Mack again. First down up to the 38-yard line. Brought down by Gary Casper, along with Corey Manley, number 24 of Wisconsin. The threat of an athlete like Mack, if you're a defensive back such as Corey Manley, number 24, even if it's third and three, you've got to play off him a little bit. Manley just gives up too much room. Wisconsin playing with rookie cornerbacks. Manley replacing the All-American, Troy Vincent. And on the other side, Eddie Fletcher, a three-year starter, is gone. First and 10 from the 39. Billy Joe drops the ball, conveniently picks it up, throws it over to Matt Jones, and through the hands. As Reggie Holt, number 10, was there, ready to make the kill anyway. That one had trouble written all over it from the snap. A lot going on there for just a regular <laughs> incomplete pass. Over with the play fake, puts the ball on his hip, and then puts the ball on the ground. Fortunate to get away with a no-loss play. Second down and 10. Obert so far today, still over the 50% mark. Three receivers to the right side, with one to the bottom, who is Jay Berry. Billy looking right, goes to Bjornsson, can't get away from the way. Well, he had some room had he gotten away from Gary Casper. Nice play by the inside linebacker. 
Jordan has been impressive, to say the least, as a wide receiver after making the move from quarterback to wide receiver last spring. For a player who has only been a wide receiver for five months, watch this catch. It's all hands, good extension. He's coming across the middle. He knows there's an inside linebacker there waiting for him. He's still able to extend those arms. So soft hands, as you referred to earlier, Don, it makes the catch. Third down and four. And First down and one. <laughs> Shackerford that Oops. time too close. That's the easy way. He's had a great battle with Novell today. And they'll march it against Wisconsin. Every every offensive coordinator in the world likes that play on third and four. It's interesting because there was so much hype about Mike Thompson, the defensive tackle playing next to Shackerford. And yet it's been Shackerford who has made the most plays of the three interior linemen. So first and ten, ball on the 49 of Washington. Matt Jones in motion. Jones the receiver. And into Badger territory to the 46-yard line as Dwight Reese, the outside linebacker, makes the stop. Huskies certainly aren't afraid to put the ball up. 43 passes last week, 19 already here today. You see motion by Matt Jones. He just continues out into the flat. It's a nice adjustment on the ball. He's able to pick up six. So it'll be second down and five. A methodical-like drive so far for Washington. Jay Berry drives up to about the 41, just short of the first down. Gary Casper, Aaron Norvell. Stop him for Wisconsin. I believe it's short. About a half a yard to go. So it'll be third and less than one with 11.53 remaining here in the third quarter. Again, the Huskies putting together a nice ball control drive. They've been able to work the ball out of their own territory into Wisconsin territory. Now they've got to get it in the yellow paint. Barry gets the first down. Who's carried the ball 10 times and has 27 yards for the day. Not hard to figure. That's a 2.7 yard average per carry. Didn't even use a calculator. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. That's impressive. And Mike Thompson made the tackle by golly. We finally got him in there. We inspired him. The sophomore sensation for Wisconsin. Part of that there he is, 6'6". Six, six. Part of that, too, is a credit to the outside people of the Huskies. Yeah. Lincoln Kennedy at one tackle, Tom Gallagher and Pete Pearson at the other. Toss sweep to Barry. Cut back, gets down to the 35, and a host of Badgers land on top of him. Aaron Norvell, one of the first there, along with Casper and Reese. Reese, Casper, Norvell. Three leading tacklers in this game, anyway, but very active. And all three are linebackers. And Shackerford of the nose guard. He's had a good day. But the Huskies in the meantime have eaten up over four minutes on this drive. We're down to 10:46, third quarter. A wide receiver to each side for Hobart. Here he comes. Wants to throw back. Oh, dangerous pass. As Scott Nelson saw it coming. Number 37. He was trying to get to Bruno. It's funny how he stopped on his rollout, Chuck. He suddenly just stopped and threw back against the, the uh, grain. We can see he's got a lot of help. Watch these offensive linemen get out there in front of Billy Joe Hobart, and you think he would continue out to where he had some more help. He was certainly going to get around the corner and buy more time. Dangerous pass. Patrick Thompson, number 96, was, had enough bodies out there to pick him up. Third down and six. Across the middle. There's Reggie, Reggie Holt, Holt again. And there's the flag. <laughs> this time he gets the flag. Might Tended be, receiver was Mark Bruner. Might be the least questionable of the three plays he's been involved with. He's waiting there trying to catch the ball and just gets run into. At least that's the story he's telling. Going for the ball. He's going for the ball. Defense. Automatic first down. And See it'll it be a first down. From field level, look for number 10, Reggie Holt. He's trying to close on the ball. Unfortunately, between he and the Oops. ball is Mark Bruner. <laughs> he was on him like yeah. white on rice. Well, if he can, he's only going to get called once out of every three times. He's going to try to make that play every time. Heck yeah. 
So first and ten from the 23. Looking left, looking right. Got a man. Yes. Barry down to the two-yard line. First and goal for the Huskies. Damon Barry with, I believe, his third reception today. And that was a nice bit of communication between the quarterback and the receiver. Good job by Barry to find that hole between the two defenders. Hobart has time to stick with him. This ball delivered right on target. You can see if David Barry pulls up shorter than that, he's in the corner's field. And if he goes any deeper, Scott Nelson is there. He hung it up in the right spot. First and goal from the two-yard line, they mark it. And his big brother, Jay Barry, scores. So Damon gets him close. Jay punches it in. Damon with three receptions for 49 yards so far today. And Jay Berry with a touchdown. So North Glen, Colorado should be mighty proud right now of the Berry brothers. Travis Hansen back for the extra point, who has been perfect so far in 1992. Four for four against Arizona State. And three for three today. Huskies widen that lead 27 to 7 with 10.05 remaining in the third quarter. Washington with an opening second half drive. We'll be back. Most parents know the frustration and delay of getting medical care for their child. But now a Seattle hospital offers immediate non-emergency care for common childhood accidents and ailments. The Immediate Care Clinic at Fifth Avenue Hospital. You'll receive care within 10 minutes of your arrival at the clinic, guaranteed. So the next time you need medical care for your child or yourself, visit your friendly neighborhood hospital. Fifth Avenue Hospital, just east of Northgate Shopping Center. Are bills taking too big a bite out of your paycheck? Tired of borrowing money from friends and relatives just to stay current? If so, you're just like thousands of others that suffer from the same problem. Bill Consolidation combines all your debts into one low affordable monthly payment. It may be the answer. No credit or collateral is required because Bill Consolidation is a law. Everyone qualifies. If your debts total $40,000, your monthly payment could be as little as $100. For details, call our 24-hour hotline in King County. Call 575-HELP in Pierce County, 272-HELP. If you could put it in a textbook, this is what you'd do. You'd have about a five-minute drive and a nice, safe two-yard plunge by your running back to get your six and then the extra point. When you know you've got four shots from the two-yard line, you don't have to get too fancy with it. You just line up and big man on big man. You see both Darius Turner and Matt Jones in the three-man backfield. Nice job by Darius, too. Boy, he took on probably the best football player on that defense. There's your drive, 455 and 80 yards. Once again, the key is that they got the ball in the end zone for seven. That's the way you like to start off the second half. You've got a Wisconsin team that knows that they're actually that they're still in the game, only two scores away. Come out and widen that gap considerably right off the bat. Lee Doremus awaits Travis Hansen's kick. Short and high from the six. Gets clogged up, and guess who's on top of Doremus? Leif Johnson, number 34. If anybody could make all conference <laughs> on special teams, it should be that man, number 34. He even helps up his teammates. He's so good. Well, the David N Kilpatrick. The right. NFL names a, names a special teams player That's to the right. Pro Bowl from each conference. It would be That's nice right. to see a special teams player be eligible for all conference honors. Lake Johnson runs down, breaks up the wedge. The play goes by him. He turns around, hurdles a man. <laughs> Looks like Robin jumping on the Penguins back there. First and 10 now for the Badgers. First time they've had their hands on the football. As Crawford starts at quarterback, they'll run a little option. And Andy Mason says enough of that. Boy, number 13 just popped out of the crowd and said, OK, my turn. Great play by what is listed as an outside linebacker. He's really a defensive end. A tough team to run the option against, one that has as much speed as Washington does. You see Tommy Smith contains the pitch man from the outside. And Crawford is forced to slow up enough that Andy Mason is going to be 13 on 13, and the purple 13 ends up on top. And they lose two yards on the play. Got a flag. 
Let's see what it's all about. Illegal motion is what referee Chuck Nelson is showing us. Mr. Panos Dead ball. Ball trying start. to show his quickness there. Offense. Repeat second down. Starting tackle for the Badgers. All 6'3", 285 pounds of from Brookfield, Wisconsin. Many, many, many players on this team from the state of Wisconsin, which you, know, you might say, well, of course, it's in Wisconsin, but not the case <laughs> in, in a lot of major university programs. I'm sure that's one area that Barry Alvarez has stressed is you've got to get the in-state kids to be committed to this, I'd say committed yeah. to this institution. <laughs> <laughs> we know what you meant. Well, four out of their starting five, front five, are all from Wisconsin. Crawford looking for help. Tries to throw to Tim Ware, but no luck as Walter Bailey, number 23, defends along with Josh Moore. Both cornerbacks helping each other out as Mr. Crawford, number 13, probably feels much like George Tuaolo of uh, Arizona did last year trying to run the option. Not much luck. And you see <clears throat> one touchdown to show for the first half. Our producer Steve Woodruff the Badger graduate is getting more and more quiet in the truck we're noticing too. third and 17. Yes. Uh, we'll get to it later. Macias back in the game at quarterback wanting to throw deep to Doremus. Tie goes to the receiver and it is up to the 30 yard line where the reception is made short of the first down. Keep in mind a flag went down. Another Walter flag. Bailey still wrestling with him. Another flag down on the Walter Bailey wrestle. Tommy Smith down at the end of the play has not yet gotten up. Doremus, as you mentioned earlier, big kid at 6'2", 185, and Walter Bailey only at 5'11". Crawford but just kind of hangs this ball up for her. Macias is back in the ball game. Excuse me, just kind of hangs this one up. All sorts of Huskies in position. Great play by. Doremus to go up and over Walter Bailey and he just wants it more than Walter does. Walter doesn't ever want to give it up after it's down. He's going to try to make up for it here. I think we have a flag as a result of the post possession wrestling match by Walter Bailey. I, it, I went down before the throw though, Chuck. Well, we got two flags. One oh, two on, the, of them? One on right. the snap, another flag at the end of the play. Tommy Smith, by the way, is up. On the offense, offside, on the defense, those two penalties will offset. We also have a dead ball, personal foul on the defense, automatic. There you go, Chuck. You're right. I don't think Walter met any malice by it. I think he was just having a good time and wanted to show Doremus that he was going to get the ball from him eventually. But this was his time to do it. Yeah. Get a look right here. See, Walter's yeah, going to get it. I, I don't know if that warrants a penalty, though. Well, didn't swing at anybody. One plays over, the play's over. You don't need one guy getting in another guy's face when the other guy's on the ground. And Coach Don James will admire the spirit of Walter Bailey, if not the decision making. <laughs> First and ten, then, for Wisconsin at the 34 of the Badgers. Tim Ware goes in motion. Macias, the passer, still in the ballgame. One and go deep. Scott DeRamus all alone at the 30 and brought down at the 22. Quite a little battle between Walter Bailey and DeRamus. They're in each other's faces again. But Walter Bailey pegged as the best cornerback in the country. Got burned again, Chuck. Giving, giving up a couple of big plays today. 44 yarder. I know if I'm going to be one of those two guys arguing, I know which one I'd rather be so far. Doremus has the advantage in that battle. Walter Bailey bites on the short move by Lee Doremus, makes up for it to make the tackle, but that's not his job. First and ten, they go to the up man or the first man on the dive. Montgomery carrying with Clifford and Dave Hoffman in there. On the stop, they get two yards. Doremus at 6'2", and good speed, and a lot of catches under his belt. Led the team in receiving yards last year as a true freshman, as Chuck noted earlier in the broadcast. So this is a young guy with a lot of experience for being a young guy. Second down and eight. And he's had quite a battle with Mr. Bailey today. Ball on 
the 20. Macias wanting to throw way over the head of Tim Ware. Covered well by Josh Moore. May have just gotten rid of it to avoid the heat or the possible sack. Good pressure on that play by Andy Mason. Muskies have not recorded a sack yet today, I believe. Only one sack last week. Again, this off for this defense depends so much on pressure on the quarterback. And when you can put him on his backside a couple of times, he's got more things to think about than he wants to. Walter. Saying, I'm going to get serious here for a little bit, <laughs> trying to make some plays. He has the wide side of the field, and guess who's coming out? Mr. Doremus to meet Mr. Baylor. Third down and eight. Macias looks to Doremus. No, he's got Ware out there. Knocked away beautifully by Shane Palcoa. One of the most improved players in the country last year. It's nice to have a safety like that that can come over and close the gap. Walter Bailey very concerned with Lee Doremus up in front of him. Tim Ware sneaks behind him, but Shane Palcoa is there to make a play. Those two together break the pass up. Good cooperation by the corner and the safety. 37-yard attempt by the kicker Thompson. From the distance, and it is good. So that's the what, third field goal we've seen today. A couple of by Hansen, and one now by Thompson, Rich Thompson. Who was 5 of 10 in 1991 gets his first one of 1992. Timeout, 7-16 remaining in the third quarter as the Badgers put three on the board. Their first three in the second half. At Taco Time, we make it fresh, and that makes it good. So why settle for food that's borderline? Try the original soft taco at Taco Time. Fresh, fresh, makes it good, good. Fresh, fresh, makes it good, and good. Check it out, eat. Fresh, wow. good, good, fresh, fresh. The original soft taco, fresh, fresh, makes it good, good. Anytime, it's Taco Time. I think that price is probably what brings customers in the first time to the men's warehouse because everybody, particularly now, wants to get good value with their dollar. The best deal is the deal where you get the most value. And value is something that uh, is more than just price. Value is legitimacy of product. Value is, is quality service. Brands that everybody's heard of, not the brands that nobody's heard of, Three points by Wisconsin on the 37-yard boot by Rich Thompson, his longest being 42 yards last year, so well within his range. And the drive overall, they ate up almost three minutes, going 54 yards, the long pass play of 40 yards, I believe, the long pass to Doremus being the key to that drive. More fun to watch, 44 yards, I correct myself, and uh, a lot of fun watching Bailey going against Doremus, quite frankly. Walter Bailey, let's face it, he may be, as Don James said, the best cornerback to play at this school. So when you see something like this happen, it's fun to watch and see how Bailey responds. How does he uh, try to improve himself? Nice to see two quality football players matched up one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. You know, Walter Bailey has won his share of those battles today, but the big play is given up. Well, as and well. And they may, try, may be trying to flood that area where Bailey is, so he's getting caught between a rock and a hard place. We're not sure what the scheme might be by Gary Alvarez, the coach of Wisconsin. Here comes Kaufman from the one. Trying to squeak through, gets up to the 23, 24 yard line, and good kickoff coverage on the part of Wisconsin. 23 yard return. Slow getting off the pile, too. Big pile. Getting off of Kaufman, <laughs> yeah. Come That's on, of, guys, get up. Takes a long time to get 15, 20 guys out of a one big mess. Most of you listening probably already know that Ben O'Brien did not even suit up today, and he is highly questionable for the Nebraska game. So that will make a big difference tomorrow, or rather next week. That'll be an early evening game out here at Husky Stadium. First and 10 from the 24. Five minute drive on their last possession. Washington now looking to get some more yardage. Colbert trying to throw. 
to the intended receiver, Jason Shelley. But it'll be second and ten. Reggie Holt along with Jeff Messenger defending for Wisconsin. Jason, go ahead. He's really the only receiver out here on this side of the field. Hope it rolls all the way out here and then only has one guy to, to pick from. And three nice, defenders. Not a bad guy to have, though. He's drawn as much attention to himself as any freshman in quite some time. Probably since Rick Finney. In, in training camp. Second down and ten. Two receivers left side. Kaufman staying inside the tackles and gets up to the 28-yard line. Carlos Fowler, one of the one of the defensive tackles in there initially, along with Norvell, number 48. 363 total yards for Washington. 6.2 is not bad, but it was about 26.2 last week against Arizona State in his two carries of 63 and 70 yards. Third and 27. A ton of time. Now he's going to run. Has the first down up to the 39. Jeff Messenger makes the tackle. The quarterback coming in against Holbert. Once again, we see the big guy get downfield a little bit. Billy Joe Holbert sees enough open turf. Knew he had a free play because of the this motion penalty that they're discussing right now. So it may be must brought be, back and third down all over again. Must be more complicated than we think it is. <laughs> what I what I saw was Carlos Fowler jump off the side. <laughs> the linesman all the way from the other side of the field has come over to. There's Steve Morton, by the way, on the left of your screen with the headsets above his ears, the blue cap. He's the new offensive lineman coach or line coach. He replaced Keith Gilbertson and has done a sterling job, uh, done a very good job. Offside on the defense, personal foul, ejection on the offense, play in Well, we will find out who has been ejected for the Huskies. Obviously something not very obvious and something rather dramatic to warrant. Well, Shelley's in there. He's trying to see if there's a boot in the suit for you. I don't, I don't see a white arm. Uh, yeah, running back. Napoleon Kaufman is sitting on the bench with uh, two players talking to him. He does not look very happy. Yeah, that's probably the person who's been ejected. And they're down to one tailback. Let's see if we can find out why. One of the three. Carter showing or Casper showing blitz. They throw to Bruner, the tight end. Up close to the first down. It may be short. And there's Kaufman. Randy Hart, the defensive line coach, talking to Kaufman. Now, obviously, he's the man who was ejected. It'll be fourth down. That same enthusiasm and energy that allows him to do what he does so well with the football it needs to be tempered a little bit when it comes to altercations. Wardell back to punt. And to receive is Scott Nelson, who is the free safety. Normally, they would have Aaron Brown back there. He must be banged up. We haven't seen or heard from him very much today. Nelson, Bruce Bailey giving chase. Good return to midfield and gets into Husky territory at the 46-yard line. Coming up the right side, Scott Nelson trying to fire things up, looks at the Wisconsin fans and says, come on, use the vocal cords. The goal of any punt return that's set up to go on the one side is to set up that wall. You can see only two players downfield, Matt Jones and Good hit by Bruce Wardell. Bailey. When the first man that has a shot at the punt returner is the punter, you know your coverage people aren't doing the job. 29-yard return, Chuck, so it's first and 10 on the 47 of Washington. Andy Mason tries to wrap him up, can't get him. And the heat by Dave Hoffman. Mason shaking his head, can't believe it didn't bring Macias down. Nice play by Macias to shake Mason. And he got up such a head of steam when he saw he had the shot that he wasn't able to throttle back and <laughs> make a sideways move. 
completely unblocked. You'll see Andy Mason right here. Doesn't have time to break down. And He's an All-American linebacker coming at him, though. Second down and 10. Basie is 4 of 12, passing. Gives to Fletcher, who tries to find another opening, but Jamal Fontaine, along with Jaime Fields, are able to wrestle him down. Good job of pursuit by those Husky people. Once again, you have a missed tackle initially, but that team speed and aggressiveness, they just keep coming. You'll see Dave Hoffman gets his shot right here, steps up, fills the hole just like he's supposed to. Fletcher tough to wrap up once again. 5'9", 190, he's a stocky one. Not a lot to hang on to. Here's the day's work so far. Washington decidedly almost well over a couple of yards ahead of the Badgers. Third down and 10. Lucius looking deep along the right sideline against Josh Moore. It's Doremus again. And this time Josh is there. He did a nice job, too. Doremus with one reception so far today. That one the being the, the big one, 44 yards. Once again, the ball's in the air a long time. A jump ball situation between Lee Doremus and Josh Moore. Pass Moore, is a little short. Moore does his job. Five straight misses in terms of passing for Wisconsin. Five, last five attempts falling incomplete. Walter Bailey will try the return since Napoleon Kaufman is has been ejected way off the side of the punter's foot this time. Sam Bite, he's having a tough time. He's heading way over to the end of the bench. <laughs> he's trying, nowhere near Coach Alvarez. He's going to sneak in the backside there. I'm going to go talk to this other go kicker. To He'll, Thompson, understand. Yeah. He'll understand. He'll uh, understand. Uh, now i got to walk. Oh, guys, here's Coach. <laughs> yeah, boy, I know, Coach. I know. I'm sorry, Coach. <laughs> I did keep my head down, Coach. I did point my toe. He's trying, trying so hard. I know that wasn't Napoleon Kaufman, Coach. He's trying to place it down there. He's trying to bury the Huskies deep in their own end. He got so... He's so got him. technical, he didn't just be an athlete and kick it. That's right. He's got a bamboozled now. Jordan in motion for the Huskies on first down. Jay Berry. And Reggie Holt, number 10, does a nice job of stringing things out with his teammates. And a little gain, maybe, maybe a couple yards for Jay. 340 remaining in the third quarter. And Mother Nature has been kind to us. It's not even breezy now. It's very comfortable. Good conditions for kickers and punters and passers. Barry has 35 yards today and one TD on 13 carries. Second and eight, nobody behind. Hobart. Across the middle, Bjornsson first down. Up to the 42, the 43-yard line. He's becoming quite the little possession receiver. If you could say little to a 6'5 <laughs> receiver. Scott Nelson, the tackle. He added a nice, a nice touch to this. Husky receiving core that has well, he look, he uh, looks, historically not been the tallest bunch in the world. <laughs> he looks more like a receiver now. He's got the elbow pad on the right arm. He's getting there. He must be talking to Joe Krolik a lot about. That's right. He's raiding Krolik's See, marker. Ernie's doing it too. He's got the elbow pads. That's that's. I'll tell you, this AstroTurf, you could do some serious damage to these uh, to those elbows. That's right. Barry again on the top sweep. A whole bunch of white jerseys out there. Dwight Reese, one of the first, number 86, the outside linebacker. And he got banged up a little bit. Got the knee tucked under the pile. He was honorable mention Big Ten in 1991. As a junior, and the player out of San Jose is going to need some help getting off the field. He was one of their leading tacklers with 82 last year. They can't ill afford to lose this man. This Saturday, be sure to catch college volleyball action as the Oregon State Beavers go to the Nets against the Washington State Cougars. That'll be September 19th at 6 p.m. Right here on Prime Sports Northwest. 2.36 remaining in the third quarter. I'm Don Boyer with Chuck Nelson, and the player down is Dwight Reese, the senior outside linebacker for Wisconsin, who has played very well today, has put a couple of hurries on the quarterbacks and had at least one sack that I remember against 
Mark Brunell ending the first half. Real big play player for this Wisconsin defense. Seven tackles for loss last year. Led the Big Ten in fumbles recovered. A reminder, if you're going to the Nebraska game, and that is a sellout, plus about 10, <laughs> I think. Uh, that game's at 6.30 next Saturday, the 19th. And looking at the overall schedule, it is a sweet one for the Huskies in terms of trying to go back to that Rose Bowl. They still have Nebraska here next week. That's at 6.30 Pacific. Then they have a bye, followed by USC and California. California, big loser today to Purdue back east. Then they go down to Oregon on the 17th, come home to play Pacific. From there, they still stay home with Stanford. They go to Arizona, which is a nice place to go in November. Bring your sticks, Chuck. Oregon State at home, and then they go over to Pullman to finish out the year. So seven home games, four away. But the real key is, is after that Arizona State victory, as you see Reese held back, nice to see that he's walking under his own steam. They now have one, two, three, four, five, six straight home games. Second down and 13. Man wide open, Frolic. And tries to stay in bounds, just a yard short of the first down marker at the 48 of Wisconsin. Boy, he was open, Chuck. A lot of field to cover over there on that wide side. Hobart just takes your basic drop, turns and throws. And Reggie Holt cannot get all the way out there to that sideline. Looked like the old lonesome end play. Crawlick just hiding out against the boundary. Clock winding down here in the third quarter. 218 remaining. Crawlick with another busy day. Had a touchdown catch on the second play of the first drive. Jay Berry runs in to Mr. Casper. The senior out of Downers Grove, Illinois. Needs 140 tackles this year to be the all-time leading tackler in Wisconsin Badger history. Yeah, he's already 10. Current record holder Tim Crumrod, longtime nose tackle for the Cincinnati Bengals. You can see Casper just steps right up, sheds David Reiner, puts a lick on Jay Berry. Huskies will go for it, Chuck, on fourth down, fourth and a yard. Once again, kind of a macho thing, mano on mano. Rushing has not been all that easy against this Henri defense of Wisconsin. Yeah, a lot of points on the board, but most of it going through the air. Billy Joe didn't like what he sees. He calls the play anyway, and Darius Turner is able to muscle his way down to the 45 and a first down. Gary Casper on the tackle. Huskies have been very successful. Three for three on fourth down conversions today. One for one. Last week, remember the touchdown to pass to Eric Bjornsson last week was on a fourth and two play. We'll come in handy later in the year in a conference game sometime when the weather's bad and you've got fourth and one and you can call upon that memory knowing that you've been successful at it in the past. David Reiner playing guard right now. Back up to Andrew Peterson. So a few folks getting some more action now. Darius Turner with a pile. They twist. Looked like a scrum and rugby there for a moment. And finally, Lincoln Kennedy comes out. Spread eagle on trying, his back. And I hope he's not hurt. He's trying to back out of the pile. His legs were caught Dark. underneath. And he tried to get out of there before any damage was done. And Boy, that was ugly. Appears to have done so. That's a big man right there, Don Boyer. Yes. <laughs> That's a whole lot of 75. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> Very, very big. Let's look for big 7-5. Left of your screen. See Darius Turner just runs it up the middle and gets those big offensive linemen just trying to push the whole pile. Lincoln kind of gets in late and then right about here decides that's probably not where I need to be. <laughs> then the pile says, goes on him. Says, if I get my butt on the ground, the, my knee's not going to get trapped. Penalty on Washington, a 10-yarder, so they back it up. It'll be first and 20. We're down to... 56 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Huskies with one touchdown here in the third period. One field goal for the Badgers. And Billy Joe wanting to throw. Looking for Mack, and I'll tell you, he had Krolik open by five yards going deep against a linebacker, Chad Yoakum, who was having to stay with him. 
Saw Reggie, that. Reggie Holt defending or breaking up this play with Mack. Saw that same matchup earlier in the game. The ball was delivered to Krog. He was able to make the catch. Huskies spread the field out once again. Nobody in the backfield. Force a linebacker to go out and cover a wide out. Over doesn't take advantage of the situation. So it brings up second down and 20 as Mack comes down here, number six to the left side or near side of the field. Norton to the top of the screen, coming across the middle. He's looking for him, gets it to Mack, nearly intercepted by Gary Casper, number 57. I'm impressed with Casper. He is a fine inside linebacker. We've seen him make some nice plays against the run. We've seen him make some nice plays back in pass coverage. 57 checks run first, drops back into his zone responsibility. Lots of time for Hobart. That's an awful tight gap to try to fit the ball through when you've had that much time to find somebody open. Was, Jasper is a great player. Wasn't as near an interception as I thought once you see it from another angle, but he was there defensively. 34 seconds remaining third quarter. Third down and a long way. They need 20 yards for the first. Hobart. And can feel the pressure coming from behind. And Hobart gets up steaming. Yoakum got him from behind with the pressure along with Kurt Maternowski. And there is a flag down. That's the reason for the hesitation. Offsides on Wisconsin. Billy Joe will get another chance if he can turn his anchor into productivity. Offside. On the defense, five Very yards. Less than exciting down. second half here, other than the opening drive on the part of the Huskies. So that'll make it third and 15, third and 20, nearing that 200 yard mark in throwing today. Total of 399 for the team in rushing and, well, total offense. They need 15 yards. Good pressure. Yorkson, the intended receiver, and Billy Joe had to throw it sooner than he would have liked. Shackerford was there. As was Mr. Casper. No surprise there. Henry Searcy also defending number 49, getting some playing time. You see, Casper gets a free run to the hesitation. Six foot five, not quite enough for Eric Yorkson. Crowd's been quiet here in the second half since that third quarter touchdown. 22 seconds remaining. Here in the third stanza. And Wardell back to punt again as Scott Nelson awaits the free safety back to catch. High spiral, tail dragon goes out of bounds as the referee walks up the line. The 15, 16, the 20, 21 yard line. It's a little better in the air than it did by line the tail doesn't the tail doesn't come up that wind really pushes it sideways in a hurry Wardell yeah. trying to pin the Badgers down inside the 20 it came close well and usually when you got the tail dragging like that with the right foot kicker that ball's going to take a hard left as soon as it hits the ground so the idea was there just couldn't quite get it deep enough into Badger territory there's the draw the Fletcher gets up to the 25 how many turnovers have we had in this game? Just one, still the interception by Billy Joe Hobart in the first quarter, and that's it. Andy Mason on the tackle, going against Terrell Fletcher, out of Hazelwood, Missouri. One that Mizzou let get away, as Andy Mason comes up with the tackle, he'll go to the sidelines. Third quarter has come to an end, and we'll return to Husky Stadium and the sellout crowd for the Dogs in just a moment. Come on, let's go where the treats are terrific. Dairy Queen, nowhere else will you find such a treasure of pleasure. A lavish spectacular of exciting, inviting, cool and creamy smooth treats. So fun loving and delicious, the only word for it is wonderful. Frozen yogurt or soft serve, plain or fancy, day or night, bite after bite. We treat you right, Dairy Queen. The word is out. It's gum out. 
Today, car owners are learning to improve engine performance. It takes gum out fuel system cleaners. Gum out's tough ingredients help eliminate hard starts, hesitations, and stalls. And there's Pennzoil quality in every product, which is why so many people know they can trust gum out. Gum out, solutions to engine problems from the people at Pennzoil. Gum out extra fuel injector cleaner is available at Napa Auto Parts. You're watching the Washington Huskies on Prime Sports Northwest, home of the Pac-10. On the shores of Lake Washington and Husky Stadium, the Huskies lead the Wisconsin Badgers by the score of 27 to 10 as we begin the final quarter here. 15 minutes to go in this non-conference game for these two teams. Going in motion on first down is Crawford. We see his back to throw trying to set up the screen pass. And a little too much pressure, a little too quickly as Clifford, Andy Mason put on some nice heat. The scoring summary overall, the pass in the first quarter from Billy Joe to Krolik, then the pass from Macias to Ware, a 17-yarder, following a 48-yard run. Billy Joe Hobart, the 60-yard scamper in what was a broken play, and then finally Hanson with a 39-yard field goal. Hanson with a 32-yarder, which made it 20-7 to at halftime. Jay Berry, after a long drive of 80 yards, gets a two-yard TD. And then Thompson with the field goal for Wisconsin. Third down and six. And it's good to Doremus. And what a hit put on. I believe by Falcoa, and it was. So Doremus with a great catch and paid the price after Shane delivers that riveting shot along with Walter Bailey. <laughs> Once again, time to throw for Macias. Takes Falco out of the play somewhat by that initial look to the right. Ramos behind Walter Bailey. Falcoa gets him to the ground in a hurry, but unfortunately for the Husky defense, it's well beyond the first down marker. Steve Hoffman again playing inside at the nose guard position. Terrell Fletcher carries for short yardage to the right side. Usually about this time of the game, you expect to see a Tommy Smith interception for about a 60-yard return or a big sack by maybe an Andy Mason. Huskies need something to jumpstart them, either offensively or defensively. We haven't seen many big plays. Look at this. Our producer from Wisconsin, a graduate, is putting the Badger band on our screen on second down and seven. Playing every see us. Walter Bailey against Doremus again. Listen, Bailey playing well defensively that time. Listening to the Wisconsin band, I didn't realize there were so many songs that were related to beer in some way. You don't know what? Now, wait a minute. This is. <laughs> They're playing Roll Out the Barrel now. They've played That's the right. Budweiser theme. And it's the basses. It's not, we're not. We're talking sousaphones here, not an entire <laughs> band. One of the best places in the country to see a college football game is Camp Randall Stadium in Madison. They know how to have a good time in on Madison, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. They're playing on Wisconsin. <laughs> Third down at seven. Three receivers to the right for Macias. Going wide, trying to go to Crawford. And over the head of Crawford and James Clifford defending. James, so it'll be fourth down. Tim Clifford did a great job of getting in the line of sight. That's right. Take that angle away. Crawford, not the tallest guy in the world at 5'11". You're going to have to drop it in there on a nickel in order for him to get a play on it. And an update. The Sousaphones are now up to the 25-yard line of Washington Territory. Is Back to punt again is Sam Veit. It's been a long day for Sam. Walter Bailey back to receive. Veit has a lot of room on his right now. Let's see what he does, I'll Chuck. bet you this ball stays in the field. Nearly blocked. Low. Then again. Driving kick that goes inside the 10. <laughs> Wisconsin's had more tough luck. They had a chance in the first half to put it down on the one inch line, literally, but it fell through the hands of a backup receiver or running back. This time a quick hop bounce and they can't save it in time. Sam Veit says, when I do do my job, <laughs> you guys don't do yours. <laughs> See, they got a couple of guys that have a have a shot at it, but 
Jamel Brown is ready to make a play on it, and Gary Casper knocks them both into the end zone. Mark Brunell, the quarterback. On first and 10 from the 20. Turner. Darius Turner, it seems like he's carried the ball more today than he has in the last year. Of course, that deep tailback position isn't so deep right now, with Jay Barrett, the only one that can play of the three regulars. Vito Bryant hurt and Kaufman ejected. See Darius Turner ends up on the top of his head. That's why those guys spend some time in the weight room trying to make their neck a little bit stronger, because sometimes you end up with three or 400 pounds trying to stick that spine in the AstroTurf. Second down and eight. Krolik flops down on the right hip and makes the catch short of the first down to the 27-yard line, and Corey Manley stops him there, or at least watches him. So it'll bring up third down and four. We're in the fourth quarter. Next week, probably see a whole lot more red down there in the Horseshoe Inn as Nebraska comes to town. And the Huskies will have their rematch with the Cornhuskers after winning 36-21 last year in Lincoln. Frolic now seven receptions for 82 yards. On third and three, going to the tight end, it is complete to Bruner for the first down. Gary Casper defending. Nice throw, nice catch there. Enough yards for a first down. Mark Bruner again. It's a good job of shielding the ball from the defender. And the sousaphones are down and out in the end zone. The Badger Band sousaphones made it about 70 yards, and they're, they're, they're down for the rest of the game. First and 10 from the 35 of Washington. Brunel and Matt Jones is tripped up by Chad Yoakum. Back up outside linebacker behind Nick Rafko, as you see, out of Windsor, Wisconsin. Huskies would like to get more yardage on first down, not end up with so many second and long, third and longs. Well, the running game has just not been all that productive today, let's face it. And they miss Ben O'Brien, no question about it. And they're about to go in to take on a tough Nebraska team, more than likely without Beano. Back, gets around the corner, short of the first down. And he's brought down by Scott Nelson. And buries her now, good six. With another injury, he was unable to play last week. See, the inside receiver just runs out into the area vacated by the outside receiver. Scott Nelson puts a pinch on that right, right side of David Berry. Third down and two. Option, here's the pitch. Jones with the first down. He's brought down by Casper. But gets the first. Aaron Nervell also in there, and Damon checking out that left hand, left leg or ankle. Dennis Seeley, the head trainer, doing the work. And that left foot planted when he took the blow. That last play, we saw Matt Jones playing that running back position, the tailback position. Said, Don, we're running out of depth with Vino you know, Bryant out, Napoleon Kaufman ejected. You see Matt Jones at the tailback. Right. First and 10. Turner, got a bit of room, trying to get around the cornerback. Coming up was Jeff Messenger, number 29. And that is why Darius Turner is a fullback. He had a 15-yard head start, open field, with he and Messenger, and he ran straight at him. <laughs> the straightest distance, or shortest distance between two points is a straight line as defined by Darius Turner. Watch this beeline he takes at number 29. He's, he's the smallest there one I see. <laughs> there we go. I don't see anybody smaller than him. I'll go for it. <laughs> Darius Turner, been a busy guy. Got seven yards there at second and three. And nice job of defensing the option by Wisconsin. And they lose two that time. Option Wisconsin are not two words that are very easy to say back-to-back. -back. That's right. Chad Yoakum on the stop, number 55. 
So that brings up a third down and five after losing a couple. Yoakum getting a lot of playing time now as a backup to Nick Rafko, who started at that position. Yoakum, a sophomore out of Windsor, Wisconsin. Yardage race, not even close. Third down and five. <laughs> Nearly intercepted by, guess who? Mr. Yoakum again. He's been all over the field. Stops a play to the right, stops a pass to the left. Making the best of his playing time. Brunel tries to slide it in here between Yoakum, Messenger, and Todd Orlando, a backup inside linebacker. Yoakum at 6'4", has the arms are longer than Mark Brunel anticipated. Mr. Wardell back to punt. Coming into the game, averaging at about 36, and Scott Nelson will again receive. He's at 37 yards per punt today. So upping that average slowly. Wobbly punt. Fair catch called by Nelson at the 17-yard line, line. So there's 8.51 remaining in the ball game. And we will return here to Husky Stadium in just a moment. Celebrate the University of Washington's first national championship with a brand new video. Our dream season, the player's perspective. This is Ed Cunningham, co-captain of the Huskies. Join me for an inside look at the team and its players. With exciting highlights on all your favorite plays. Interviews with your favorite players. Like All-American Mario Bailey and Steve Entman, Outland and Lombardi Trophy winner. When you got to do something, you want to be the best. And I mean, that, that's, that's my goal in life, to be the best, best defensive player. Find out why this team was so successful and won back-to-back -back Rose Bowls. It includes a recap of the perfect 12-0 season and the road to the top. See footage from the White House and a special interview with Don James. In this spectacular video, you will see how we became the national champions. For a behind-the-scenes look, it's our dream season, the player's perspective. Send Chuck a money order today for $19.95 plus shipping and handling. Or call 1-800-433-DOG. You're scoring by quarter. And it's first and ten as Terrell Fletcher gets the carry. Up near the 24-yard line. It was first and ten. With the ball on the 18 originally. Now let's look at the scoring. Coming so far here in the fourth quarter. And Washington scoring... The lion's share of points in the first half. Got off to a rip roar and start. The Huskies with a two play drive early. Wisconsin with a quick one of their own. Big plays going both ways. This second half has settled into a six, eight plays, punt type of ball game. Second down and four. They want to go short to the tight end. Michael Rowe, number 81, defended by Dave Hoffman. So it is third down. Let's keep an eye on Mike Lustig, number 74. Well, we're trying to put pressure on the passer here. Get Lustig and Fontaine both end up on the ground. It's probably the hardest thing to watch, and yet it may have the most profound effect on every play, and that's the play of your three interior defensive linemen. Third down and four. If they put heat on, everybody has to pay attention and do something other than their job. Good secondary coverage by Washington. It'll be fourth down. There was absolutely nothing there in terms of wide receivers and tight ends or running backs. But don't you, you feel that way, Chuck? It's, it's what those three guys in there do because that affects everybody like a chain reaction. Well, in any type of scheme, it certainly is important, but particularly the way the Huskies like to play because they count on pressure from those inside people to take some of the pressure off the outside people because they're asking an awful lot of those defensive backs to cover people one-on-one. -on -one. Sam's back to punt again. Sam Vite, good distance, but very, very low, way over the head of Walter Bailey. And he's going for it. Oh, my goodness. Anytime, as the Cardinal rule goes, the ball goes inside the 10, it's hands off. It's a net 74-yard punt. 72-yard punt, excuse me. <laughs> but it was about six yards off the field all the way. Good thing it went over Walter's head or he could have put on a return. They'll call it officially a 68-yarder. Pre previous long was 55. Walter trying to explain 
to Ronnie Miles, the defensive corner coach and punt return coach, why he did that. <laughs> Honey, he can talk all he wants, and I don't think Coach Miles is going to buy it. All he has to do is point out the field and show him the ball on the four yard line. Darius Turner out beyond the 10 yard line. He has 29 yards for the day, a lot of workhorse yards on seven carries. And in terms of receiving, got eight yards. Second down and five after the carry by Darius. Grinnell still a quarterback. Darius again, short of the first down. With a few licks on those linebackers, though, as Norvell's on top of him. Along with number 66, Mike Thompson, the sophomore. Norvell and Rafko also in there. So it'll be third down. They need one yard to keep the drive going deep in Wisconsin territory. And as for Nebraska today, next week's opponent, they won big. But on the other hand, they didn't play Notre Dame today either. They played Middle Tennessee State, I believe. We'll get the score for you here in a moment. Barry trying to get the first down and does so. Six and a half minutes to go. The Huskies would like to put together a game-ending 95-yard drive. And these are the kind of third-down conversion plays you need to do that. The big guys up front do their job. Jay Barry just kind of gets on Lincoln Kennedy's backside, gets into the defensive backfield. Messenger on the tackle. Yeah, Nebraska defeated Middle Tennessee State today 48-7. to That was in Lincoln. So they've had two huge wins but over lesser opponents in Utah and Middle Tennessee State. And for now, <laughs> did everything but a somersault before he went out of bounds. He wanted to do something there, yeah. but he, he couldn't run, couldn't throw it. <laughs> Ended up just kind of waddling out of bounds with it. It's like the mule between two bales of hay. Which one do I go to? I think we should we should put some music to this. <laughs> we like to bring it to you as close to the action as we can get. Right uh, here yeah. on Ooh, Prime no. Sports Northwest. You see Mark Brunell? Yeah, better do that. Not yeah, quite yeah, sure. <laughs> I didn't hear any music. Did you, did you hear any music? All that dancing going on. You'll think that somewhere. Second down and 13. Draw Jay Barry, but Casper uh, will have nothing to do with that. Barry Casper going into the backfield to make a good play. <laughs> He's still alive and was eye to eye. Scott having to look right into Mark Brunell's face that time. He held his ground well. And it's third down and 13. Right you are, Mr. Nelson, with 5.43 remaining here in the fourth quarter. It's good technique. You know, he stayed low, camera steady. That's right. Bend at the knees. Saw the whites of Brunel's eyes, too. Ooh. Third down. They need a lot. 13 yards. Could have it here. Bruner. Nope. Short of the first down by about three yards. So John Burdell will have to come out to punt after the defensive play by Corey Manley. Bruner with the reception. not exactly the six and a half minute 95 yard drive that they were hoping to end this game with it's interesting though in that as you see Verdell come in this kind of has the feel of the 1990 season where Huskies were they played well but not up to everyone's expectations the first two games of the year and then they proceeded to shut out SC in their third game 31 zip so close to so close to being very dominating again an answer that they found last year wobbly low punt Riddell struggling that's a good husky roll and goes out at the 36 yard line these balls must be thinner than the punters are used to because they having some trouble getting them in the middle. So there's an investigation here in Washington checking on thinner footballs. We'll be back. New Rainier ice lagered cold filtered draft light. Wisconsin trailing 27 to 10 here at Husky Stadium to 
Darrell Fletcher trying to get outside of David Gilpatrick, number 35, who makes the stop. He is the third string safety behind Tommy Smith and Lewis Jones. Very well blocked play by Wisconsin. You can see Jimmy Wendell gets sealed off. Patrick comes in from a safety position to, to make the hit. So coming in is Daryl Bevel, a true freshman. He just put in two years of Mormon mission work in Cleveland. Has all four years of eligibility there, and the catch by Ware is good despite the hard hit by Lamar Lyons, number 25. Great concentration by Ware. And a good little flow throw by Bevel. You talk about a true freshman, 22-year-old true yeah. freshman. He's been around a while, makes a nice throw here. Tim Ware's probably too shocked to let go. Lamar Lyons just drives that ball deep into his chest. There's no way it can come out. I tell you, that Husky defense is going to be greeted rudely by the starting defense if they give up any points here late in the fourth quarter. Bevel back to throw again, trying to put some heat on the quarterback, can't do it. And playing defensively was Reggie Reeser against number two, Lee DeRamus. Hey, that Ware, was... Excuse me, Chuck, but Ware has only two receptions today, but for 38 yards and one touchdown, he had the first quarter TD for the Badgers. Big play receivers. Or... DeRamus made a nice play there. Tried to draw the flag. Once he saw the ball was out of play, he just ran smack into Reggie Racer <laughs> to try to make something positive happen. Second down and 10. Ball on the 39 of Washington. Here's the toss sweep. Fletcher tripped up by Reggie Racer, number four. Got that left hand in there, was able to swipe at it. Justin Thomas also in there playing. He's a third string player behind Andy Mason and Donovan Schmidt. He's number 22. In terms of overall rushing defense, that looks a little more like what we've seen in past years. Badgers really in their third year of a reconstruction project for Barry Alvarez. Bevel throws to his tight end. And Reggie Reeser making the stop again. That's their third string tight end, Vince Zulo. So it's first and ten. And Barry Alvarez with a 6-16 six overall record. But then keep in mind, they went 1-10 and ten his first year, 5-6 and six last year, fourth most improved team in the country in the 91 season as compared to the 90. Fletcher and a jamming early on the play. And you've still got a lot of regulars out there. Dave Hoffman still playing. Marco Farr, Pal Cole, they brought all the guys back in, didn't they? Starters decided to take matters into their own hands. <laughs> Both they and defense coordinator Jim Lambright trying to keep the Badgers off the board. Keep them at 10. Two minutes, coming up on two minutes. Second down and nine. Ball on the 24 of Washington. Palcoa showing blitz. Nobody comes. Man open across the middle. Doremus, and he is hit by Tommy Smith. Doremus has paid the price every time he has caught the ball today. He's also gotten right back up and come back and made another play. Tommy Smith with a good lick that time. One man I would not want to be hit by is Tommy, Tommy Smith. Tommy back in the starting lineup after having some academic problems and not starting the first game. You see, he just kind of lays in wait, starts to make the close on Lee DeRamus, and <laughs> and gets, a, gets a little wobble in those knees. They're down in three. Here comes the pressure. Dave Hoffman with a sack. The interior linebacker, inside linebacker, coming all the way. <laughs> it's got to be Clifford. He's doing that to you. <laughs> Only another inside linebacker would stand there <laughs> and celebrate by banging their heads against each other. Third and three. They bring a lot of folks. One more than Wisconsin is able to 
counter with, and there's Dave Hoffman. It's third and three. You're sending people. you got to have people like Dave Hoffman, your leaders, to come in and make a play. That looks like the first sack of the day for this Husky defense. And the Huskies have given up four. Steve Borden will have a few things to say about that. The offensive line coach when they get to work on Monday. Big week coming up for the Huskies now as the Cornhuskers come in to take on these same Huskies. Nebraska ranked the 11th in the AP poll coming in. And Don James, of course, would like nothing more than to take two straight from Tom Osborne. We shall see. Very, very big nationally televised game. We'll, of course, have it for you on Prime Sports on Sunday night next week at 8 o'clock. And it'll be a 6.30 game, so it'll be almost dark at kickoff as well as bringing the lights, portable lights, much like they did for the Goodwill games. Fourth and nine, 58 seconds to go. Ball on the 24 of Washington. Here comes Jimmy Clifford from behind. He misses. Bevel looking for it. at least the first down marker. Got it and is out of bounds with 48 seconds to go. Got a lot done in 10 seconds. <laughs> nice job by Lionel Crawford. The quarterback wide receiver punt protector. See, Bevel gets away from the initial rush of James Clifford. Not sure what he's going to do with it then. But watch 13 Crawford come in here. He's on Jaime Fields. Jaime can't get off of him in time to make a play on Daryl Bevel. And Bevel picks up enough for the first down. Wisconsin is still playing. 48 he, seconds to go. They want more points. Pressure's on the first unit defensively for the Huskies. Here comes Dave Hoffman again. The thing I'm so impressed about Dave Hoffman is if anybody needs to get something done, it's usually Dave. He, he takes it in his of his own accord and makes something happen. Timeout called by Wisconsin. That may be their final one. We'll check. Scoreboard shows they still have one more with 42 seconds remaining in the game. And the Huskies, of course, thinking about not only their pride defensively and wanting to allow only 10 points for the Badgers, they they know where they're ranked in the polls. They want to stay up there. Well, they start thinking about the Sunday morning paper hitting the porches of the That's right. people on the East Coast, and they see a 27-17 score if the Badgers get this ball in the end zone. You want to be as impressive as you can. Tommy huh? Smith and Walter Bailey, two of the players whose responsibility it is at this point for that Husky defense to keep Wisconsin at 10. Bevel, number 11, the backup quarterback from Scottsdale, Arizona. He's actually a transfer from northern Arizona. Then he did his missionary work or mission work for the Mormon church for two years, as we said, in Cleveland. So, like you said, Chuck, a fresh start at the age of 22. He's a pure freshman in terms of eligibility. Sticks around long enough. He could play with his son. Or yeah. Something. Second and 13. Montgomery in motion. Out of time, got a receiver. It's where in the corner, knocked away by Walter Bailey. Walter's going to be ready to hit the whirlpool tonight. <laughs> he's been involved with the ball in the air a lot. He's obviously landed on his back a time or two. He's got that W coming loose. See Shane Palco and Walter Bailey both just kind of waiting in this corner. Bevel lost it out there anyway. Walter Bailey goes up, makes a nice play on the ball to. Make sure that Mr. Ware cannot make a play. 35 seconds remaining for these dogs. Donned in purple. Trying to hold the Badgers to 10 points. Third down and 13. Bevel again. Picking him up was Andy Mason. Getting the sack on Bevel, and the final timeout is called by Wisconsin. Andy just getting enough of his hand on Bevel to bring him down. <laughs> nice athletic play. He beats Brent Moss. Gets Mr. Bevel down. This program is authorized under television rights granted by the University of Washington. Any publication, reproduction, rebroadcast, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Prime Sports Northwest is prohibited. 
Chuck Nelson and yours truly Don Poyer about ready to wrap things up here at Husky Stadium on the home opener of 1992's Husky football season. Here's the last play by Andy Mason and the sack. See, he gets penetration right there. See number 33, Brent Moss on the ground. Andy Mason put him there, and then he puts number 11 on the ground. He just got by Mike Verstegen, number 67. He, by the way, made the freshman All-American team last year in 91 as a pure freshman starting at the left tackle for Wisconsin. Though he's back. So the seeds are planted for Wisconsin. They're going to develop a good program there. Fourth down and 23, Tommy Smith and company. Andy Mason two in a row after Smith took on a lot of the interference. Tommy Smith started lining up on this play about 20 yards outside <laughs> the ball and got closer and closer to the snap of the ball. He, he was coming pretty full speed. You can see him. He's coming out of the left side of your screen. He's coming full go. Bevel, Bevel sees him early. Unfortunately, he's got no place else to go. <laughs> Andy Mason with his second sack of the last two plays, his second of the year. Jaime Fields and Jamal Fontaine getting a lick in there, too. 22 seconds remaining. And everybody's heading for the gates. Huskies will go 2 0, stay ranked number two in the country, I'm sure. Miami was idle today. Richard Thomas, the redshirt freshman, getting a chance to carry the ball once. He is out of Kentwood. And this should probably do it. Seven seconds. And Don James comes up with victory here of 146. And for his career, 171. So Don James and the Huskies get the victory, 27 to 10. 13th straight game or victory against a Big Ten opponent. And it's the first meeting between these two as Alvarez at the head coaching position. He met him as an assistant when he was at Iowa in the Rose Bowl, but first time head coach against head coach. So Wisconsin in their season opener falls to Washington. They go 0 and 1 and they will return home now to resume their Big Ten season as the Huskies stay home for what seems like another three-fourths of their season. <laughs> Six and, more home games to go. And they will host Nebraska. A lot of work to do for this team before the Cornhuskers come to town next Saturday night. Final comment right after this. <laughs> 